Welcome back, Tokyo Fresh. How are you guys doing? Jordan Green here as always. We're here with David. Hey. <laughs> Great reaction to David. <laughs> I don't know why you just don't say the person's name. It's more fun to make them introduce themselves. Okay, fair enough. And also we're here with Facial. Oh, hey, that's me. Motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he said my name. I feel special. Yeah, we got, um, if you guys saw on the Instagram, we got Sean here this week. So we got a personal trainer, one of the only... Yeah. Uh, oh, is this where I say my, is this where like I say my titles? Yeah. What's your, stuff that I'm doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, what's your you? spiel? Oh, okay. So, uh, Who I'm a, you? I'm a dirty freelancer as I refer to myself <laughs> constantly, but, uh, most of that is focused on personal training. I'm ISSA certified in both training and nutrition, and I'm probably one of the only foreigners in Tokyo working for a Japanese gym. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, in Japanese with... Japanese, Japanese, Japanese clientele. clientele. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I feel like that's kind of a rare thing. I've never really heard of it before, but I won't I'm claim not. to be the only I, one, but it's up there. Yeah, I've not. And I can't I'm say. also a uh, health and fitness sport writer yeah. on Tokyo Weekender. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, okay. we, we, we didn't have one before. Oh. Like, we just didn't have one. And uh, one day, um, did, did you work for did I? Yeah, that's right. Freelance, yeah. So I remember one day randomly, my boss was like, hey, Jordan, like, uh, does Sean do like this and this and this, like, personal training and freelance stuff. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Even recently, he was like, Sean speaks Japanese, right? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Did he Why? realize like, that because I interviewed two Japanese people from my last article? <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> might Japanese. do it. Uh, <laughs> Dude, literally. Oh, it's good. But yeah, so we'll have a nice little conversation later on about, uh, about sports and gym stuff in Japan and gym culture here, which is going to be fun. Just something I wanted to talk about for a long time. Like, yeah, you, you've been you've been saying it for I've been a like, while. Ages. This I mean, is like, like episode two to now. Yeah, I was like, I'd always talk a little bit about it. I'd be like, yeah, you know, because gym coach in Japan. I'm like, oh, let me wait until Sean says because he actually knows what he's talking about. And especially with like coronavirus and stuff. You, pr- I've seen you get more invested in it. Oh like, yeah, recently. Mm. Yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. Surprised you because fucking Corona on the hype train, dude. It's a good hype train. Dude, honestly, it's <laughs> like, I mean. There's worse hype trains to be on than health and fitness. I mean, yeah, it's a cocaine hype train. You don't want to be on that hype train. I they, mean, you they, might they, want to be on that hype In Japan, train. Japan man, if you're on a cocaine hype train in Japan, you're playing a dangerous game. Dangerous game, It's dude. cheaper than Australia, though. <laughs> That's all I know. We discussed this summer that, like, people would fly from Australia to... Uh, to Tokyo, Tokyo. To like, do, like specifically to do cocaine. I've heard that's a thing. What? Really? It's, it's cheaper. Drugs yeah, in, in Australia, it's super expensive. I don't know like actual figures, but it's... Why? Is it just like they have like cracked down on it or what? Yeah, like I think their borders are just super controlled. Yeah. Mm. But it's a- apparently like for some people, if you're going to go on like a full like weekend binge, it's like cheaper to just buy a plane ticket and get it in Japan than buy the same amount in That's fucking Australia. weird. I mean, think about Australia to be fair. Like, you go into Australia, you have like an apple in your mm. suitcase, they're gonna yeah. fucking rape you, dude. They're gonna wreck you. Are you insane? They'll find like, you. Is this an apple? Well, I mean, yeah, spend over. Have, you, have you ever seen, uh, you don't watch TV much, do you? Nah. Here. They, they have a TV show here that is literally like what the, the uh, Narita airport police find out of people's like custom luggage. Things? Yeah. Oh, shit. I'd watch that. The the like the amount of times That's like TV show. Yeah, dude. the amount of times like Chinese people would come into the country and the dogs like walking around it's like this cute little fucking beagle or whatever and sits down next to the thing and they're like oh well you gotta bring your crap to the the counter the they thing. bring it to the counter like the whole suitcase is just filled with like food it's like food <laughs> there's like a guy I remember the episode that I caught the guy had like you know like Chinese like black chickens right <laughs> yeah <laughs> just like yeah. Dude, he had three whole dead black Chinese chickens in his fucking luggage, and they're like, Rani Kore. And he's like, It's chicken. And they're like, You can't have it. Yeah, dumb it, dumb it, dumb it. You can't have that. And he's like, He's like, Ah, oh, but I'm having a party. And they're like, We don't give a shit. Like, just. I don't know. You feel like that would just be common courtesy when you're going to a new country. It's like when I go to someone else's house, I don't just bring like three raw chickens. Like, why, do, why bring it to right. someone else's country? Right. I can imagine like that beagle going around. He like he rolls up to a suitcase, like takes a seat down. He's like, yo, we're gonna have to fucking open up that suitcase, bro. Like, bring it up here. Oh, but it's just full of like loose blood. He's like, what are you doing? I'm having a party. Like, I need, yeah. I need this blood. <laughs> it's, and, not, like, it's not human. <laughs> like, fuck it out, dude. Inspector Pochi's got a rough life up the Naruto beat. <laughs> 
Oh, baby. But it's like the, the people get like super incensed. Like, how dare you confiscate my stuff? It's like, the fuck do you mean? Like, you're bringing in illegal items into the country and then getting mad that you got caught. How dare you take away my firearm at the airport? Have yeah. You no shame, Tanaka san. <laughs> yeah. It's always Tanaka. It's always Tanaka. It's always Tanaka. He has a no firearm tolerance. Listen, he's basically a liberal in America. He's a, he's a no firearm tolerance. He's Does playing it, in games. This fucking guy <laughs> where I used to live, yeah. and uh, at the train station, I would see his like political poster all the time. Yeah. And it's just him. And they photoshopped his head like bigger than normal. So he's kind of like looks like a weird like chibi version, but his it's like his normal face, Classic. just bigger. Go on, I'm intrigued. And it's Japanese just him giving a one. thumbs up like this, <laughs> yeah. and then in a speech bubble, it just says no guns, and then it has like the the red cross thing on it. That's literally the that only his, thing on the his, poster. That's, that's in Japan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does he know that Japan doesn't doesn't have, have guns, guns right yes. now? Guns, yes. where? Yeah, I'm like, are there are there? Someone should tell him. Are there <laughs> other people? Who are running for office that are like, no, dude, just bring them in. All the guns. <laughs> is that a problem? Yeah. This is, like yeah. A, this is like a constant theme in Japanese politics. We want more guns on our streets. <laughs> He's like, listen, I, I, I went outside. There were no guns. I want more. Can and we, can we frankly, I just can't handle it. <laughs> it's been, it's, we've seen how well it works in America. Yeah. We, yeah. Want, we want that sort of success. <laughs> exactly. In our, in our small Japanese town. I went to, I went to Kanazawa last week. Didn't get shot. How can we change this? <laughs> how, can we, how can we mend the situation? Well, obviously he's hanging off the wrong people to start with. I went to mm. Saitama last week. There was a man just throwing bullets at me. He had no device to launch them at you in a faster rate. Guys, we need to fix this. This poor man <laughs> and his loose bullets. bullets. <laughs> his loose <laughs> bullets. <laughs> oh, fuck. What was that? Oh. See, fucking Tanaka-san throwing bullets again. Di- didn't even kill me. This poor man. This poor man. Ooh. Is it my bee? I forgot they had water on the thing. Did you have water in the microwave? No, 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 not in the microwave. On the stove. You had water on the stove? Yeah. We're well, not some sort of heathen here boiling water in a microwave. <laughs> my Come bad. on. Yeah, have you been... My bad. So, when I was in a, living in Kanagawa, I was, like, so broke to the extent where I couldn't buy a toaster. Yeah. So, to toast my bread, I had to, like, put bread in a pan and, like, basically toast it in the pan, like, homeless style. But, like, That's but, like, legit, dude. Come but, on, like, don't, butter don't. on it and... No, listen, okay. I get it's legit, and it makes some good old toast, but still pretty hopeless. <laughs> you know what you sound like right now? You sound like someone who's never had a grilled cheese in their life. Listen, I'm like, American. That is a complete legitimate cheese. way to toast bread. I don't eat grilled cheese. Honestly, if you put, like, a little butter in the pan That's what I used and to then do, yeah. do it, yeah. it gives it, you better toast. It, it, it does, to be fair. All no, I'm saying, look, so, ooh. go home, make a grilled cheese sandwich. Mm. In your toaster oven, and then one on the pan. You tell me which one's better. Okay, I'm going to do it. Guys, if you're listening right now, keep listening. But also, <laughs> go go to your stove and follow Sean's instructions just there. Please make two sandwiches. One with on a pan, one on a grill. And tell us which one's better, guys. We want to know. We want to mm-hmm. hear, hear from you, the listener. My but- official nutritionist advice is Shit. to make it in a pan. Fuck! He's got me with that one. Well... <laughs> Shit! <laughs> I'm nothing! <laughs> okay. what, what's your stance on... Grilled cheese in general. Is that like a healthy a healthy thing you should uh, be eating? No. <laughs> I mean... No. Uh, in general, <laughs> since we're bringing it back to fitness, and you know I'm here because I love to talk about it way too much. Yeah. Uh, cheese in general. Cheese is probably something you should avoid. Mm. I mean, like, you don't have to cut it out altogether. But our, it's our, like... Our listeners are fucking plummeting, right? Mm. All our Canadian listeners are fucking turning this no. shit off right now, blocking theirs and uh, screaming uh, to them. I mean, like... Japanese people don't Wisconsin. eat cheese, so... They don't eat real cheese. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ask any of yeah. our French friends. <laughs> they don't eat real cheese in Japan. They like they like the instabai cheese. Mm, instabai. It's significantly worse for you. Yeah. Yeah. It, well, it has no nutritional value. It's, 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 they've added extra stretch. Yeah. At the yeah, expense yeah, 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 yeah. Of nutrition. Oh, you mean like you mean like the processed cheese that comes in like a package and it's like stretchy, like yeah, the string like the cheese kind shit. Of like when you take a bite on for your Instagram photo, it like pulls Stretches out. <laughs> oh, like that the fake pizza mozzarella type shit. Yeah, they love that. They're all about that here. Mm. Is it like plastic, like welded into that fucking cheese? It's disgusting, dude. Like it's, Probably. It's not. It's really good. Speaking of cheese, it's a really good <laughs> cheese store near my not near my house it's on my line and it sells like real cheese like big blocks of like good old cheese but it's fucking expensive so i go there every once in a while when i kind of want to make some really good pasta mm. and i'll get some really good cheese from that store and then i normally i said i got a good uh what did i get last time it was a really good mozzarella and i mm. made this fantastic pasta it was so fucking good i remember eating it and thinking to myself was this worth the amount i just spent on fucking mozzarella 
How much did you spend on the mozzarella? 500 yen for mozzarella bowl. That's not, that's a lot. not bad. That's not a lot for mozzarella. That's pretty cheap, actually. Yeah, having that's a like a sale. That is like standard grocery store mozzarella rates. It was good. It was good mozzarella. I hate it. Dude. Mozzarella is quite protein dense. It's a decent option. Come on, boys. Come on. Get in there. Man's getting the correct gains. It's gonna mm. be tough. I do like a good, like, uh, what is it? The Italian dish, car- car- carbonara. Car- no, carpaccio. Carbonara. Not carbonara. I do like carbonara, but that's not what I'm talking Like carpaccio, where it's like mozzarella, tomato, and basil. The problem there is like, hey, we've just lost all our Italian viewers. Yeah. yeah like, they're all gone. The they're... Italian demographic's gone. <laughs> I... Nobody listens from Italy. No. Yeah. It's like good. 1%. It's like one person. It's like one dude. Hello, yeah. our one Italian listener. I hope you're okay. No, Viva. he's already gone, dude. He, 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 you're just talking about past and he's done. No, come back. Don't talk about Jojo. It's too I late. Promise. It's too late. Jumped off the leaning tower. Fuck. Already, oh, it's done. It's, it's so easy. It's already leaning. If you jump, yeah. if you jump on the wrong side. You're sliding those. So <laughs> <laughs> rolling down rolling the side. Down. He's, he rolled. He already rolled down. And the leaving out of pizza. You made that mistake, dude. Your suicide is gonna be pretty fucking painful, honestly. Yep. Ah, good times. <laughs> so fucking <sweaty and> stupid. <laughs> the pause and sigh brought that together. Yeah, that's great. Um. Yeah. So how much we? By the way. Uh, like, this <laughs> week. Aside from the last two days, fine. Dave was in hell for the last two days. Yeah. Okay. It's test week, so there's nothing to teach. So ah. I'm just sitting there. At his desk. I got really good at Richie Mahjong. <laughs> for fuck's sake. You playing Mahjong? Yeah, I'm playing Mahjong. I'm just, I'm at my desk and I'll like type on my computer mm. and I'll just be on my phone playing Mahjong. <laughs> I think the one thing I miss from English teaching is all the downtime. Mm. Like during the day we can just like fucking play mahjong and like yeah. drink coffee i well, drink I mean, so much coffee well i asked my teacher i'm like uh what like what do you want me to do next week and they're like well tests are on monday tuesday as well so you don't have class and i'm like okay guess that means i'm playing mahjong guess that means i'm doing nothing yeah well, it's one of those things where it was really nice until like we experienced like working from home during the shutdowns mm. and it was like wow i could just do nothing much more efficiently from my own house yeah. yep yeah, it, it, so it feels kind of bad now, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I it's and they make it out to be like, oh, like this downtime is precious time for you. You'll need all this plan to like all this time to plan your lessons and stuff. No. It's like if you ever talked no. much before, you realize that you just do the same lesson basically like yeah. five times in a row. And mm-hmm. then, yeah, you plan a lesson once, you do the same lesson a bunch of times, then you maybe plan the next lesson. Like, yeah. I had enough downtime during like elementary school stuff where I planned my entire year of lessons in like. Like two, two months, months. Yeah. right? It's, and then, yeah. then I was like, I guess I'm going to study Japanese and fuck around for the rest of the year. And the trap is, if you teach for more than one year, then you've got next year's done as well too. Yeah. Yep. So I remember that when I did the the second year in elementary school, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I have all these. It's the same thing again. Okay, cool. So you just like invent some new games, like and then you're done. Oh, dude, I I had I had that situation this week on dude. Wednesday morning. I show that? up uh, at my school Wednesday mm-hmm. morning, and like my school's kind of weird. So, usually, like, the, the teacher's room is on, like, the first floor, right? Yeah, classic. Typically. Mm. Ours is on the second floor of, like, nice. a completely separate building. Bougie. And you, like, go through a set of doors into just a stairway. Nice. Up into the, the nice. teacher's room. So, I open the door. I see the, the one of the English teachers I work with. Yeah. And she's like, oh, David, are you ready for special needs class this morning? And I look at her and just go, huh? Huh? <laughs> Been and there. she's like, she's like, oh, we have we have special needs today. I'm like, you didn't tell me about that. And she's like, oh, well, it's on your schedule. I'm like, yeah, but my schedule has like five other things that I don't actually have to do that you've written on my schedule. Yeah. So I have no idea what you actually want me to do. Mm. And you didn't say anything. Mm-hmm. So I assumed that I didn't have class because that makes logical sense. She's like, oh, well, you have 30 minutes. To figure out something. I'm like, okay. But I'm like, I already had all the shit done from last year. So I just, done. But she's like, duh, I don't know what to do. I'm like. We had a similar thing of our special needs class. where basically during, I was like elementary school Mm -hmm. teaching. She was basically like, oh, Jordan. So you're an English teacher. Do you know much about uh, about special needs classes? I was like, (laughs) nope, nope, nothing. She's like, oh, in the UK, when there are special needs classes, what do you do? And I'm like, well, one, I've never had training for that. So I have no idea. Um, two, I'm not special needs, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> right. Never been in those classes, so how would I know? And three, this sounds like, like your job, so mm. I'm going to leave it to you. Yeah. And I'm going to go back to my desk and sit down. And I, 
I pushed the fucking responsibility to her so quickly and just like I was like this is for you to do I'm gonna go at my desk now good luck kind of thing and then like that was it for the year it was like this is yours and she'd come to be like Jordan special needs let's go and on the wage lesson she'd be like here we're doing this today I'm like thanks thanks girl this sounds great right then I left the school new teacher overtook me uh took my place apparently that teacher was doing all the special needs classes she asked me like the first week in she goes oh what what have you been doing for special needs and I'm like what she's like what lessons did you teach I'm like I don't know she's like what did you plan I'm like plan no no I didn't do it she was like what they're making me do it I'm like Shit, shit, shit. Sounds that's like the thing. they don't make you do anything. They don't make you do anything. Yeah. No, you make yourself do it. Yes, mm-hmm. that's the trap. That's the trap. Yeah, they go. Can you do this, please? And you go. And you make the mistake of saying yes. Yeah. Never say yes. <laughs> yeah. O- always say. Always maybe. say. This is above my pay grade. It always yes, is. This is above my pay grade. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you want that's to, true. No matter true. what you do at a school, as long as you say, "I don't get paid enough for this," you will never be not. Yeah. And it's always shit. true. Yeah. R- it's always true. When you're in a school. If you're teaching as an AOT, the janitor, he gets paid more than you. That's true. Oh, dude, for Absolutely. sure. Anyone in that school, you're the lowest paid person there. So any extra work is above your pay grade. And to be 100% honest, I'd rather do his job. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a big relate, to be real. <laughs> Dead serious. Oh, man. <laughs> well, it's, it's nice, though, because, like, when... Anything on the planet is yeah. technically above the amount, like like <sighs> is above your pay grade. Mm. Then you don't really have to do anything. Yeah. Yep. It's mm-hmm. nice. It's like the, it's the one cop out you always have. Yeah. Is that it's, nothing they could possibly make you do is actually worth the amount you get paid. So. Mm. Yeah. I feel like once you come to terms with that, you're pretty much like, Kiki Gucci. Like everything's mm-hmm. okay. They want you to ascend it even greater, and you stop caring entirely. That's a good level to be. Yeah. At. That's a that's a good level to be at. So it's like they try to trick you. They try to get you into caring with like, oh, you wear a suit because this is a legitimate job. And like, oh, you gotta, you gotta like, help them kids. <laughs> you make you make a real big difference in these kids' lives. But if you've ever like taught and like switched schools, and like you know, no one cares. No one cares. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you're re- if you're really good, you'll have a couple of students that remember you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, ugh, I actually I actually met uh, one of my students and her mother. Cause she in a very roundabout way messaged me on Instagram mm. and ended up, like meeting during last week where her and her mother were like thanking me profusely for getting her kid interested in English and now her kid is going to a high school that specializes in something to do with English mm. and you'll get kids like that and that's pretty interesting that's when you're a really good teacher and you can like do shit like that but generally I was skateboarding to school wearing shorts and t-shirts and leaving early to go to the gym like I wasn't really like right it would be like I'd be like yo is it are there, are, there, are there classes after lunch for me and they're like no I'm like Yo, coach, can I just go? Like, coach always says, can I just go? And he'd be like, yeah, Jordan, of course, but yo, bitch, I'm out then. We're in the gym. Yep. And I skip to the gym. You got like, Eagle Tanto being like, oh, I'm going now. I'm like, yeah, she's like, oh, we're going to call Intrack. I was like, go for it. When you start a new school, there's always a fun mini game you can play too, which is how fast can I go from suit to tracksuit? Yeah. It's just speed running that process is like... Yeah. You got to slowly, slowly get more casual and then see how casual can you get. That's what I used to do. Before you can never just go, anything. you can never just 180 because that'll ask questions. You have to like, you have to ease you into it. You got to ease into it. The question is how fast can you ease into it without drawing it, like attention, attention to, to yourself? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got pretty good. It was a week. <laughs> it's good. That's nice. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It was a week. It went from... It was like Monday. It was like not even a suit. That's 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 the trick. You don't start in a suit. I started in like a waistcoat, a, a dress shirt, or pretty something. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. And then the yeah. next day, it was like just a shirt, like a little like short sleeve shirt, and like some some comfortable trousers. You know what I mean? Like, there, there was no tie involved. The next day, the shirt was kind of a bit more a polo shirt. There were shorts, and by Friday, I was on a skateboard, dude. Mm. <laughs> I was on a fucking skateboard. I wrote up like, "Yo, dickheads, I'm here to teach." <laughs> You know, they always tell you to, like, dress for the job you want. Yeah. And so, I personally own three dress shirts and one pair of pants. <laughs> it's, I, I, like, Fair. I just wear the same thing for a couple of days in a row and then you dress just, in... just slide into the gym clothes. Yeah, like, so like, like, you dressing for the job you want is wearing, like, sleeveless shirts and, like, weight training gear. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, that's what I mean. So, uh, it's it was super easy for me the last time I did it. Hmm. It was just, like... They make you do anything active, and you're just like, oh, man, it's so hard to be active. There we Enjoy go. your time with these children when you're wearing this shirt. And they're like, oh, yeah. you should bring something more casual. Tracksuit. Bam. Straight away, yeah. Yep. Bam. Right in the tracksuit. Never take it off. You've just got to get that conversation started. Just You've got to go from, um, 
oh man, I want to I hang out with these kids and play some sports outside, but man, I'm wearing this full suit, you know? And they'll go, oh, bring casual clothes as well and just misunderstand that as wear shorts every day. Yes. Yes. No, don't, don't misunderstand it. Like, interpret it, interpret it more creatively. Yeah, <laughs> it's open for interpretation. Nah, man, just whip those kids' ass in dress pants and a shirt. <laughs> That fucking de- that'll fucking demoralize him. David's out here playing baseball like a free. Dude, I, free I free fucking free. did. Yeah, no, I didn't. fucking did. I was out there. I was Sorry, like, man, I was baseball. like, I was, I was like watching them play baseball, and then the gym teacher's like, "Hey, you want to you want to play baseball?" I'm like, "Okay, do you want you want to play baseball? I'll fucking play baseball." David's like, literally, but little did they know, I was a major league athlete. Yeah. So I was fucking smashing these kids with baseball. Nah, dude, some of those kids are fucking insane. Like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The, some of the baseball kids are. Nuts. I'm actually not sure what level you teach, but when you get into junior, junior high, high school, yeah, junior they high. get they get yeah. intense. Yeah. Cause like, like, yeah, yeah. there's like the international like high school tournament and stuff, which is such a huge deal. So like, yeah. they, they start early. Yeah, Koshian. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, yeah, like some of those kids at like Koshian are like 16, 17. They're throwing like 110 Yo, kilometer an hour fastballs. So I'm like, fuck that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's insane. I think one time I was like hitting like balls with the with the kids. Mm-hmm. I couldn't like I could not hit because I don't play baseball. <laughs> the the style was really weird. I couldn't hit it. But we, we have rounders in the UK, which is a short bat, one handed. Uh, that that yeah, I'm yeah. good at. I, I don't know why I can I can target better. So I couldn't hit it like doing the two hand like swivel stroke thing. I was like, how the fuck is this? I don't understand the mechanics of this. And I was like, yo, can I hit it with one hand? And the kid looks at me like, e? and I was like, it, it's an English thing. Can I do it with one hand? And the guy was like, yeah. Can I, I was like, can I have the shortest bat? And he was like. What the this guy doing i fucking smacked that ball dude it went flying not on the first hit like the second hit the boy was like mm. what the fuck what that's like it's called rounders so it's like it's like but it's it's like baseball but it's, it's like snooker stu- it's like what the fuck snooker snooker's you know like it is. snooker's like weird billiards right yeah oh snooker <laughs> okay snooker sorry American. <laughs> sorry for I'm people sure. who actually speak english properly <laughs> shut the fuck up also, Americans, we both say it the same way. Thank you very much. We are yeah. a very international gathering of people here. Yeah, American, Canadian, English. It's pretty good little combination. The the three English speaking nations that matter. I say as we lose all our <laughs> South African viewers. Fuck Australia. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you! Think about Australia. Yeah, fuck Australia. No, I left them out intentionally. Good, as you should. That's that's mm. what we do. <laughs> that's what we always do. They'll, they'll come coming. They'll come crying back here when they need their cheap cocaine. Mm-hmm. Bastards. <laughs> that's all they care about. What Ch- cheap like, cocaine. Cheap, cheap cocaine and beer and kangaroos and dangerous, dangerous fucking animals like platypus. Think who likes Australia? No one likes Australia. Listen, everyone says they like Australia until they actually go to Australia. And you realize even the platypuses, platypi, platypi, they they poison you. Yeah. Yeah. They got like poison barbs and shit, right? Let me be on yeah. record and say that I've never said I like Australia. I just want to make this very clear. Mm. They have big ass spiders and small ass spiders that can kill you. Like it's yeah. both sizes can kill you. Both. This is the thing about Australia. <laughs> they have spiders. And- <laughs> they have spiders. But and they have like they have like big ass kangaroos and small ass kangaroos, and both of them can kill you. Both of them can kill you. Yeah. This is a fucking bad country. Why do people live there? Like, even their winter is hot. Their winter's at the wrong time. You should know why people live there. They didn't have a choice. It was your fault. Like, Australia's like the... I'm, I'm so side-eyeing right now. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, shit, it was our fault. Uh, Australia's like the place that God, like, exiled all his fucked up animals. It wasn't God, it was the Brits. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna put the animals there. Which, well... Well, well. Mm. now the Australian viewers are for sure gone. <laughs> for sure gone. Like, fuck this podcast. It's great. Like, one day on it, and I've already, like, alienated, like, half of the international community. <laughs> this is what happens on the Tokyo French podcast. You're yeah. right. You alienate all the listeners. <laughs> anyways. I jumped over to that. I was like, I wanted to talk, actually talk about... Uh, I was going to say, sp- we, we, we opened speaking of jobs you'd rather do than teaching. I was going to... That, that was why I was going to... Well, it's great, because you opened with, like, how much you wanted to talk about it, and, like, we just immediately did not talk about it. <laughs> this is what happened. I'm yep. sorry. Okay, so... Personal training in Japan. Yeah. So gyms in Japan. So as as you guys know, like there there are there are gyms in Japan. Yes. I mean the, uh, the for better or worse. For better or fucking for better or fucking worse. It honestly, <laughs> David, how you been to a gym in Japan? I've seen a gym in Japan. <laughs> okay, that's a start. The first step is looking. <laughs> yeah. The first step is looking. The second, well, maybe not necessarily. Two. You could probably lift with your eyes closed. I don't recommend it. You could do it. But. You could lift with your eyes closed. I feel like um so. Going to the gym in the UK, going to the gym in Japan. Like, I feel like mm. the gym culture is, like, entirely different. 
Yeah. Like, it's really, really strange. So, for example, in the UK, there's more of, like, a stigma. People go there to lift, but it's really... No. It's too bro You know what I mean? So even if you go to the, like, the chain gyms, there is the, there's that whole weird sort of... Not the, like, atmosphere uh. about the gym. So you can't really just go there and lift, like, like sort of weights to your level. Like, there's, there's a whole stigma that like, you need to be lifting heavier things. You need to be, like... You know what I mean? It's it's a it's not- you you need to be over do- not overdoing outdoing everyone in the gym who's not you. Who, yeah, pretty much, and that's that's a fun thing to have internally to go into the gym being like I'm gonna lift lots today. I'm gonna try my best to lift mm-hmm. as much as I can, kind of thing. But then when the the atmosphere of the gym is like because in the UK you have people like like bros gathering in groups like looking at people working out and you're like yo right. dude like fucking focus on your own shit kind of thing. That's in the UK anyway. In America it's uh, America's a mixed bag. It really depends. Take me through it. <laughs> a lot of things. So you will get very broy gyms. I would just like so. My first gym experience was like at my university's gym, which was like way good. Probably like the best gym I've ever been to in my life because it was designed for like athletes that go oh, to our university. Fuck. So like we're talking multiple floors, like nine squat racks, like ten. Yeah, that, that, thing, that like was this. Gym. That was the same at my university too. What? Like. They, because my university had like a, it's the biggest one in the province. So it had like a dedicated like area for um, like track and field. And they had like a football team or like a hockey team or something. So like inside the building, they had a full size track. And then they had like a swimming pool, like Olympic style swimming pool, like fucking everything. This is what country of space can do. This right. Shit. Yeah. We don't have any fucking space in my country. It sucks. My UK, my gym in the UK sucked. It was like a, a leisure center more mm. than a gym. Let's say in my university. And you go upstairs, like the, the sort of gym floor of it, and it was trash, like absolute trash. Like there's barely anywhere to really work out. There's tons of running machines and shit, like squat racks. The um, the size of like, the gymnasium itself, like the place where you can like, run around and whatever, play basketball, that was pretty big. We used to do martial mm. arts in there. That was fun. But like the actual like weight training areas of it, terrible. Absolutely terrible. That's how Japan is. Again, a country without space. <laughs> yeah. So right. like, I went from... I went from that, like, everything you could possibly want, multiple floors, yeah. to, like, when I first came here and was in Ibaraki, like, going to gyms, I had to go to two gyms to get everything I wanted. Yeah. It was, like, there was one gym that had good machines mm-hmm. and, like, uh, ellipticals and cardio stuff, stair climbers, and then they had, like, a Smith machine and, like, right. leg press and good stuff, but they had, like, no free weights. And only a Smith machine, like, no bench or anything. And there was another gym that only had benches. <laughs> They had no fucking free weights. Who has no free weights? They had like they had like set dumbbells that went up to like thirty kilos. But sake. okay, yeah, okay, makes sense. There's only so many times you can lift before thirty kilos becomes yeah too light in something. Yeah, sure. But like, so I had to like I had two gym memberships going on. I remember that for a period of time, oh, just God. like just to get like so I had like when I did my big compound lifts, I had to do it at the one gym with the barbells and the free weights. Like if I wanted to squat, deadlift, bench press, and then mm-hmm. if I was doing more focused stuff or wanted to do more cardio and like more isolation exercise, I had to go to the other one. Ooh, and so it was like, I had like the weirdest split ever. <laughs> That's brutal too. Cause like I've heard across the board, Japan's gyms, like for membership prices are just way higher on average than yeah. back That's home. That's especially true for the big, like the big box gyms. I don't know. Yeah, do you yeah. go to any time, right Jordan? Like yeah, what's, that, yeah. what's it run you now? Seven a month. Yeah. 7, That's high, dude. Yes, it is, dude. Oh, it's high. You gotta... If you sign up in times where there's, like, a, a deal... <laughs> New Year's. New Year's. Yeah. New Year's is good to sign up in, or, like, uh, just spring. Spring, 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 summer. Spring and kind of summer Like, moving well. season. Yeah. They'll have these deals, like, oh, sign up now, get two months free, kind of thing. And it's great, but then after your two months, you're paying for the... You're paying right. 7000 paying 7000 a month, kind of. I think that's a pretty standard price for Japan. It is, yeah. Which is cool. like... Well, in in the more Inaka parts of the world, like... like I think I was spending 9000 total. On two gyms? On two gyms, yeah. Because well, one of them was like a local community gym, and it was super cheap. Ah, it was the one that had That makes nothing. sense, yeah. And the other one was like a 6000 You can go one. to the... Uh, what are they called? The, uh, the, the, the community center gym things you can go to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like a couple hundred yen to enter? Yeah, yeah. No. So, but but it's always like as far as I know, it's always like a toss up as to what's actually there. Yeah, it's like yep. it's it's really a coin flip on yep. what's good. I mean, I'm still surprised you don't go to like the one near our station. Uh, Have you gone to it? 
I always go to it. Like the, the, oh, the Kogane training. Sorry, I, I think that's... you're thinking of a different one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, but, one's, uh, that one's good. For context, Jordan and I actually live one station apart. <laughs> yeah, we do. We have a drinking bench like slapped out in the middle of our two stations that we, it's like halfway between our houses perfectly. Mm. And we go there to talk about life and get drunk on a bench. And conveniently, like right next to that drinking bench it's is like, a like a this tiny garage gym, gym under the Chua Line tracks that's yeah. like caters to like old school professional bodybuilders. It's yeah. crazy. It has like everything and it's really cheap yeah like five thousand a month which is kind of expensive compared to u.s prices at least but still like it's cheap compared to the gym. it's because considering what the gym has yeah it's cheap they have like everything it has everything everything you everything mm. you want and the old guys i mean like yeah. apart from like nice machines but it has like cables and free weights yeah, 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 right yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty much i mean pro bodybuilders go there it's like it's it's enough it's enough to get you by mm -hmm. it's pretty fun it's a nice little gym i've only peached inside of it i was mm. thinking of signing up to it but that's the, the the one the one detracting factor is definitely the gym rats, but yeah. and and not the not the not the bodybuilders like the actual, actual rats. rats. <laughs> like, like, it's under the chew line tracks. What do you expect? It's... Yeah, they're, but the problem is because the rats are like in the gym, they're also getting really strong. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, they, really... they they survive off of the the spilt protein powder and creatine. Yeah, they're really strong rats. Like they lift, they can lift probably more than I can. Like they're pretty strong. Like that's the issues. I can't go to that gym until I'm strong enough to outlive the rats. <laughs> to fight the rats. <laughs> like, you're gonna, you're, it's like an RPG. You have to defeat the rats first and then you get to the gym. <laughs> you're escaping their prison in oblivion. <laughs> well, it's like, if you've, if you've like ever lived in Japan Skyrim. too, you know that like if you if you drink protein powder, like you are immediately a, a muscle-bound freak. Like, just it, immediately... That's like the number one question I get That's in gyms. So dumb. Like yeah. people will see me and like my physique is pretty pretty decent. Yeah. It's like it's nothing amazing by like bodybuilder standards, but it's better than average, especially in Japan. And people will see me and immediately just be like, "Oh, you're so strong. You must drink protein powder." It's like those. Why do those things equate to you? Like because that's what you do. <laughs> it's like when it's, you go to gym, you drink protein drink powder. Protein powder and you get big. That's it. The thing about protein powder that so many people seem to overlook here is that it's it's protein. That's it. It's uh, yeah. That that's it. That's like that, that. There's no follow up to that statement. It's protein. Like it's if you if you eat protein, you don't need protein powder. Yeah, like pretty much. And mm. if you if you drink protein and you don't actually use the protein, your body just pisses it out. Like, Basically, yeah. I mean, it's so like is that is that an issue in Japan? Like just with the, the average Japanese diet, like there isn't enough protein, or I think that's very much part of that perception. Yeah. Like right. Uh, I mean, we've all eaten school lunch here, which is like a thing. If you look at that, like, <sighs> oh lord. I, so I I track macros on that, or I did, mm. but it's like the average is like seven hundred calories yep. for the whole thing, and it's thirty grams of protein, right. which is like no. the recommended amount of protein, like the, the the rule of thumb kind of thing that people tend to use is one gram of protein per pound of body weight. So for me, that's like hundred and eighty grams of protein. Yeah, and like if I'm like my calorie level, like my maintenance calories are like 2,800. So like I'm eating a third yeah. of my calories, but getting yeah. like a fifth of my protein. It's just like, <laughs> it's, and that's like, that's like a nice sort of microcosm for the Japanese diet as a whole. It's like a really typical Japanese diet. So like if everyone's eating at that ratio, they're probably pretty protein. Deficient. Yeah. Is that, is that why like all my kids at school are just like fucking twigs? Like every single one of them. <laughs> I mean, to an extent, but then also the culture just, like, really sort of encourages, like, Being... leanness and more cardio-based exercise. Mm. Like, there's not really a gym culture in yeah, Japan. Really. Like, Jordan was talking about, like, the sort of UK thing yeah. before. Uh, in Japan, when you go to the gym, it's, like, a lot of, like, you will get, like, some guys who want to train and get strong. But it's, like, a lot of, like, old people trying to get healthy. Yeah. That's vanity right. lifters are pretty big as well. Vanity lifters, too. Like, a lot yeah. of the bro lifters. Yeah. Like... They, they want to hit 110 years alive, man. <laughs> old people are trying to live forever. And yeah. And the younger people just trying to get, like, the really, like, the ho, like, hosoi pak, like, really thin. Hosomacho. Hosomacho. Like, mm. hosomacho is, like, Yeah, or thin. as we say in English, the, uh, the, uh, starvation abs. Starvation abs! Where you get so skinny that you don't have any fat over your abs, so you can see them. Yeah. And right. you think you're strong. Yeah. <laughs> But essentially, <laughs> but you you do one crunch and you're like, ooh, because <laughs> it's like ah, my tummy hurts. Ooh, I'm in pain. Because the thing about abs is it's literally what you eat. Yeah, like it's that you have a layer of fat over it, mm. over them at all times. No matter how strong your abs get, you always have fat over them. So yeah. it's all about body fat percentage. So well, I mean that's you why can you can get abs by starving. You see, like 
you see like uh when they do like movies or whatever with people who are like big right they say like oh yeah, don't Jack don't like roadmap body yeah like That's... don't don't drink water for three fucking days yeah. Oh, so, you, so you're yeah. just like Height. Yes, that's, that's um, a bodybuilder. Yeah, that's like that's pre competition training. Yeah, yeah, yeah essentially, yeah. My, uh, dehydration. I follow a bunch of bodybuilders now because they're pretty fun to like follow, like girls <laughs> and guys, and it's really fun to watch them like go to a competition, and then after the competition, you're, you're watching their, like their Instagram uh, live feed, their videos, or whatever, and after the competition, they're like straight away like eating like some food, like, yeah, massive meals, like sweet things and shit, because they you were saying like they're basically starving or something. Like yeah, that. so like. Moving up to a competition, there's, like, a lot of prep work that involves, which is essentially just, like, you you start with, like, a carb load, like, eat a lot of carbs, drink a lot of water, and then, like, you slowly wean yourself off it, leading up to it. I do like carbs. And then, like, until the point where, like, the day before the competition, you don't drink any water, and then you eat only carbs right before you go in. And, like, I don't know, at least from what I've seen with bodybuilding things, like, it doesn't seem very physical because it's just it, it's people flexing on stage. You're standing still on stage, but like to, to have your muscles tensed for that long when you have no food and no water in you is like so physically draining that like mm-hmm. that like they all binge afterwards. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's you like you burn so much energy doing that. I that feel like you'd like have to though. Like you can't just you know not eat for like two three days at a time. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, man, if if you're not eating for two or three days, like I'm surprised some of those people don't fucking just straight up pass out. Man, they probably... Well, you always eat before the competition. Because, yeah. Well, well because, because at that point it won't matter, right? Yeah, 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 well, yeah. It, it will give you the energy and also it actually it helps to an extent because you get kind of flat if you don't have any food in you. Mm-hmm. Whereas mm-hmm. like if you load up with like whatever carbs and they're in your system by the time you actually go, you get like a lot of a fuller look Ah. to your musculature so it's also helps you from passing out on stage <laughs> you don't want to pass them on stage i heard that's not good marks they don't yep. they don't like that <laughs> so it's, so it's so definitely like, minus points not a good sign of strength when you're passing out on the <laughs> you stage. can't stand up you can't stand up dude yeah i love that but i kind of want to you're saying you're, gonna, you're cutting it's like eight percent yeah so that's my current thing it's partially through work as well because um it's like that my debut on the roster kind of thing is mm. uh from like freelancing part time thing to like being officially contracted sort of thing is memo gonna start yeah. happening soonish and like as part of the, the debut thing, mm-hmm. my boss is like like you should try to get like as lean as possible for those photos because it would look really cool. Yeah, like not like a hard pressure thing, mm-hmm. but uh, I've set eight percent as like a nice little mm-hmm. a goal target. I've been ten percent before, but I've never gotten lower, so it's kind of just like a personal and, yeah growth thing. But God, is it rough like. <laughs> So we were all, um, I was saying with this before, so we were basically, we all were at one point teachers. Yeah. yeah. Last time, so. We have different sort of background on the subject, but interesting that like David is a, a natural teacher. He's trained. He's yeah. got the actual, like, what's the word? <laughs> Certificates and such. Sure, yes. He's a, he's actually, he's a natural teacher. I, and was, I, I'm a poser. I just, I'm just hanging out with kids the entire time. Like, I just thought that was it. Now I'm doing something else. Sean's now doing more freelancer things, but yeah, like, I feel like I'm... the transition to, from teaching to something else is pretty difficult. So, oh, especially, yeah, in Japan, yeah. So, like, we, I think we spoke before about, we had Lissandra a few weeks ago, and we were yep. talking to her mm-hmm. about coming to Japan initially, and then coming to Japan, avoiding the whole English teaching thing, and then going straight to uh, basically a writing. job. J- yeah. Like, like a job, job. I don't want to say a job job, because, like, <laughs> but, teaching uh, is a job if a you're non- hired by a yeah. school, but whatever. Yeah, you a know non-English you teaching mostly. style yeah. job in Japan. A so, non-ALT job. Yeah. yeah. So, how did... How are you finding... How did you transition? I, should, I already know, but the listeners don't. How did you transition <laughs> from teaching to, well, personal training? Because I, I assume gonna, there's going to be someone who's hearing this who wants to do personal right. training in Japan, and they're going to know how to yeah. make that transfer. Uh, short answer is luck. Right? <laughs> it's, mm. it's hard. It's much like more rough here. So like, if you don't know anything about personal training in general, like in the US, Canada, the UK, I imagine it's kind of a similar thing. You get yourself your certification. Uh Probably the best advice I've ever gotten about certifications is you just get one. It doesn't matter which one. <laughs> if it's accredited, if it's accredited, it it's a starting point. Honestly, that, that seems to be the case for like a lot of things. Like yeah. Japan doesn't really give a shit what it is so long as you have a paper that says, this guy's smart. Yeah. Like, like that's it. I can do it. Well, there's like a lot of debate with personal training, whether you want to get like ISSA, which is what I have, or like NASM or like... Uh, God, all the ones that I'm blocking on now. A lot of acronyms involved in it, but uh. they're they're all accredited. 
they're all valid. Yeah. And it's a starting point. Like, it's not like I've got my certification and now I'm a good personal trainer. It's like, it's the, the it's all, it's, it's the like base. step one. Okay. It's the right. base level. It's like, it's like when you're coming to Japan to do like English teaching, for example, your base is a degree. Yeah. yeah. What, what degree do I need? A degree. But yeah, I don't imagine, like I don't imagine clients come in and they're like, well, you're not, you don't have this certificate, so fuck you. Yeah, no one, yeah, no one cares. I feel like no one knows which one. It's like, that's long, probably the bigger thing. No one knows. It's like, as long, like, as long as you have a quality accredited education, you're fine. Uh, basically. Yeah. Okay. And so that's step one. And step two is usually you get like a standard job at like a big gym, like Anytime Fitness or Gold's Gym or something. You get like a job as a trainer there. Yeah. Mm. Uh, a popular one in the US is Equinox. I've heard they hire a lot of like fresh Equinox. trainers. I don't know if you have them in Canada. What do you think about, uh, I don't think, the name sounds familiar, so we must, or like maybe I'm just watching American TV and I've seen commercials or something. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about, uh, this has always been interesting to me because I, I see it uh, like advertised pretty often. What do you think about stuff like Rise App? Uh, so I have opinions about Rise App. <laughs> so, <laughs> me uh, too, go on. Or in the, uh, the attempted pronunciation of the word is Rise Up. <laughs> ah. But, uh... So in my it in my rise app, but. in my mind, I feel like it's a dirty, dirty scam, because it seems to be. Dirty. I mean, I could be wrong. Right? I'm not saying you're not wrong. <laughs> yeah, my scam radar is fucking. T- okay, so it's not a scam. Uh, rise up will get you results, the, but from what I understand of it, as someone who's never done it, uh, they are. I would equate them to like the Adkins diet or like ah, the. Yeah. Uh, one keto, year. keto fat, keto, yeah. yeah, essentially, where it's like the they are designed day. to get you results fast, yeah, and that's right. it. Yep. So, like, when from what I've heard from experts in the community, I suppose my gym boss has talked about them before. Yes. Uh, just sort of like how their process works, hmm. and my opinions based on secondhand knowledge is that uh, it's you go there and they say you say I want to be this weight, I want to lose this much fat, or whatever, mm-hmm. and they will micromanage you to get you to that point they'll be like eat this food this day at this time Mm. do this at this at the gym at this time and if you do that you will lose weight Mm. and so like you will get results that's the thing you'll get results you'll go there if you want to lose weight you will lose weight so so they're they're putting in the work somewhere yeah yes but here we go it's the the reason that it works as like a like a long-term business in a lot of ways and that i would probably not recommend it is because much like a hyper restrictive diet is because they don't sort of tailor it to your needs. They just give you the macronutrients that they know you need to lose weight. You feel hungry all the time. You feel tired. You don't like what you're doing. It's like a very hardcore, non-sustainable diet process. So like as soon as you're off it, you will have lost weight. But then it's always this thing in personal training where like you don't want hitting your goal weight to be a point where you go back to normal. Yeah. Like, it's not like a, I did this and I hit my goal and now I'm going back to normal. You want your change to be sustainable. Yeah. To make mm. it last a long time. And Rise Up does not do that. Rise Up gets you to the changing point and you want to go back. And when you go back, you gain the weight back. I, I always but, wondered that because, like, I see the commercials and, like, the the transformation of a lot of people is, like, pretty significant. Yeah. yeah. But then you, you it's a commercial, right? So you don't ever see, okay, what's that person like, look like where are they now? three months after, yeah. four months after? Now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I would... Be willing to bet that, yes, they, the transformation is amazing. They put in all the hard work. They get to where they're going. But then one year later, they're right back to where they started. Okay. Right. So, and it kind of works as a cyclical business model as well because then they go back to Rise Up when yeah. they... <laughs> right. I feel like a... Because it worked before. These are like yo-yo diets, basically. Yeah, yo-yo diets. Yeah. So that's kind of how I view um, mm. the hyper-restrictive diets like Adkins and Keto and stuff. It's like you will lose weight if you cut out a lot of Everything one food group, yeah. right? So the way... I mean, keto ketogenesis and stuff has like a lot of science behind it. Is it the one meal a day thing? Keto is uh, no carbs at all. That's it. Okay. It's because like it's like a caveman diet or whatever. That's I hear. paleo. That's paleo. Sorry. Yes. So keto is when you don't eat carbs, diet. and it essentially because uh, your body needs carbs for fuel. Yeah, we like. But carbs. if you don't eat carbs for long enough, you enter a state of ketosis, which is where your body produces these things called ketones, mm. which will essentially fuel you in the place of carbohydrates, carbohydrates. and. Uh, it's pretty good for getting lean a lot of the time, but the problem is there's like uh, lots of downsides. Like keto flu is a thing. Like entering ketosis makes some people just feel like death. Like it's, I mean, it's not like you, you feel sick. You feel like you have the flu. It's like a thing that happens sometimes. It's not Mm. everyone. 
And so sometimes it works for people. And if it works for you, it's great. But like oh, a lot of times you fuck? get stuff like that or like just the the hyper restriction that comes from cutting out carbohydrates. Like mm. what if you like pasta? Like what if you like bread? I, love, like, I fucking love bread. I love bread and I love pasta. We love these things for at Tokyo Fresh. It's delicious. <laughs> Where's pasta. that bread sponsorship? Yo, l- listen, we, <laughs> we trying to get a Tango sponsorship. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Don't ask questions. I won't. I was going to, but now I won't. Thank we you. need, we need, we want a, we want a sponsor from Cometa Coffee, Tanga. Bread. Bread. Okay, bread. Just bread, brand, bread. Bread, bread. Fucking bread, brand, bread. Nice stick. <laughs> nice stick. Nice stick. Nice stick bread. That's nice. a good, that's a good, it's long, it's nice. It's, it's a, a big yep. stick. That's a it's a nice rule. stick. It's a nice I know, I've seen it before. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> you think I'm not... Do you think I'm mature enough to the point where I would ignore nice dude, stick bread brand? Dude, I, I saw the other day at the 7-Eleven, <laughs> nice stick with jam. <laughs> and I was like, hmm. Well, you know, passively, they're filled with cream. You know, right, of like, course. It's, it, doesn't, it doesn't need to say cream. They're always, no, they, they always have, they have cream, inside. cream in them. No, it's fucking filled with cream, dude. It's disgusting. I mean, what stick doesn't? <laughs> fuck out. But if you want to eat things like nice sticks every day... <laughs> Then I say bringing it full circle. <laughs> then it's not a diet for you because you'll just you'll get that craving for nice stick and you'll want to go right back to it after, the, after you lose the weight. <laughs> You're like I've, I've lost the weight, but at what cost? At what cost? What cost? <laughs> and it's yo-yo dieting. It's like because you lose the weight, then you bring it right back. Then you lose the weight, then you bring it like back, right back. So like oh, a big thing that like especially like the place I've been working and my own personal philosophy emphasizes is like sustainable diet. Sustainable diet. You want to mm-hmm. be at a point where you can lose weight, but not feel like you're restricted. So yeah, that right. when you lose the weight, you don't feel like there's something you want to return to. You yeah. just mm. now I can eat a little bit more of the things that I'm already eating, and I like it. It's like not like a return to the old That's ways good. kind of thing. I follow a bunch of uh, people who have really bad diets on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. And one of my, one of my, <laughs> yeah. even, I they, definitely do. No, it's like a, I think I know exactly what you're going to bring up. Yeah. <laughs> so I follow a lot of people who have really bad diets on Instagram and not, mm. not bad to the extent where it's like, look at this guy eating cake every day. I'm like, no, he's happy. Let him eat this fucking cake. It's delicious. I'm following people who are like, I'm going to get healthy. And the way I'm going to get healthy is by eating nothing but watermelon for the next three months. Shit like that. No, a motherfucker. What? A, a motherfucker posted on the fucking gram. He goes, I'm going to get healthy by eating raw skiaki meat. Oh, the everything. red the red meat diet. So the, oh, no, not just no. the red meat diet, the raw red meat the, diet. The raw, oh. raw supermarket skiaki meat. So... And Here's, I said I said it to Sean, and he got so mad. I am so mad. I am, got, I'm going to have to talk about it. <laughs> he, I, that's why I wrote up. He got pissed. And I, I normally send Sean this stuff, but I saw that, and I was like, Sean must know. And you were you were fuming. Okay, so, <laughs> so good. Upon <laughs> upon finding out about this, I did my research. I looked up the the red meat diet. I looked up the raw meat variant of it. Yeah, and. This diet can work. It's, again, the same problems with cutting out an entire food group, except instead of cutting out an entire food group, you're cutting out everything except raw meat, which is... A power play. A <laughs> huge power play. It's, it's like... It, it is, like, the most extreme form of hyper-restrictive dieting. Imagine going to, uh, like, yakiniku and just ordering, like... <laughs> just plates of meat plates you don't even cook meat. it. Just and it's it. like, sir, the stove... Oh, I won't be needing that. That's a fucking power play, dude. So, like, to my understanding by the people who have found success with this diet yeah. is, one, before they started this diet, they were, like, professional athletes or bodybuilders. They already had amazing physiques. Yeah. They already, like, had professional, like, nutritionists helping them yeah. right. do this, right? Like, they are professionals. So, that's part one. And that's how, like, that's how they got their success. Two is that they had their raw meat micromanaged to, like... I'm going to eat raw liver this day, raw heart this day, raw, like, this cut of cow this day to get their proper intake of micronutrients. Because the thing about micronutrients is, like, in an omnivore diet especially, you need a lot of variety. Mm -hmm. And you can get that variety from other things, but Mm -hmm. raw meat is very, very restrictive. Yeah. If you've ever been vegetarian or vegan, you know it's hard to get all your proper nutrients, like, just from those things. It's possible, but it's it's more difficult. And now imagine trying to do that, but you can only eat raw meat. (laughs) And only beef. Only right. this cow. So, 
to that extent, if you are like professional and you are micromanaging it to that extent, you can probably find success with this diet. You might even like get even stronger mm-hmm. doing it. Sure. Who knows? Yeah. It's totally possible. Totally within the realm of possibility. Yeah. But this man was not doing this. He was not micromanaging his meat intake. He was going to the grocery store and buying 500 grams of raw sukiyaki meat and eating it on the train ride home. Yeah, pretty much. And it's like... Fucking gross. <laughs> so answer me this. Anyone here. Yeah. What cut of the cow is sukiyaki meat from? Uh, I would say it's not a cut of a cow, and it's probably just, like, the random scrap garbage that they <laughs> They, like, they like the... Play-Doh push it together and, yeah. like, run it for, like, a mill or something. I would imagine. So that's, that's honestly probably close to what it is, right? Yeah. Yep. So, probably ask me. If that, is, ask me. if that is your meal for the day, yeah. you're probably not getting that diverse, mi- like, micronutrient profile that you should probably be getting, getting for right. to be a functioning human being. Yeah. Like... Again, like it, it, like you need like a mix of organs in this too to make this work too. Because mm-hmm. like you need like the iron, you need the well, like yeah, like the liver, mag- liver has like high, 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 high iron, iron. calcium, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, and you like you can get it from raw meat, but you can't get it from like a raw cut of meat that you don't understand. <laughs> it's the the thing because like you're just like yeah, it's like I'm gonna my new diet is I'm only gonna eat pop tarts. The classic, Hell the yeah, classic pro science example. Like I will count my calories to the T and only eat pop tarts. It's like. I'm yeah, you can lose weight doing that, but like, do you really? He's gonna be disgusted. But you'll gonna, probably feel, feel like garbage. Probably get diabetes. You don't want to get the diabetes. It's like maybe, no, yeah. No diet, I wouldn't. No I wouldn't be surprised because like pop tarts are like ninety percent sugar, so delicious. But there's like um, there's a bunch like uh, that I've been following on Instagram, especially recently. Now that mm-hmm. like, Corona happened and like everyone sort of was inside for a long time, so mm-hmm. I feel like everyone put on weight, right? That they're trying to lose. So me too. I when I put on a little bit of weight, and I was like, I gotta lose this weight I've put on. I would do it. By sensibly dieting and going to the gym, and I did, and I, I was like, I'm stronger now, but stronger than I was when uh, fucking Corona really started. I'm losing some weight. This is great. I'm looking online to see like my my fellow, my other my other uh, fellow, my, my fitness peers, my fitness peers, my 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 bros in the realm of fitness, and to see how they were doing. This one guy was like, I was like seventy, I forgot it was seventy seven kg. And he's like, I want to get back down to seventy, and he did that by eating using the one meal a day diet. You know? Yeah. Which is like pretty good. It's like you like one I- intermittent fasting, kind, kind of. of. Uh, it's, it's like a special variant of intermittent fasting where yeah. you like you just pack all of your daily, daily calories, calories into a, a single meal. meal. Yeah, I think I don't like that because it's too much to eat in a single meal or over a single sort of period of time. Would you run out of space depending on what it is, right? Yeah, I don't really want to. Yeah, imagine eating, imagine having soup as your one meal a day, like like or something. Soup? I don't know. Just, like, just soup. Just soup. Just soup. Just chicken noodle soup. As you're wondering. So, I mean, you'd have to eat a lot of, chi- chicken, noodle a lot of chicken noodle soup, soup to get a daily so calorie normally, amount. It's almost like between these times, you, you'll eat, I don't know, but I only eat between, let's say, like five and five to eight is the only time I'm going to eat. Like, right. Try to get all the meal in between like this time of day or something, something mm-hmm. like that. But so I follow, I think Terry Crews does that. Terry Crews is. I don't know if he fasting. does it, but it, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Terry Crews is like similar between. Seems like it fucking works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's a legit diet. Yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's a legit diet between like whatever, whatever that he only he eats like all his calories a day. The guy I'm following on Instagram is doing one meal a day, mm-hmm. and he was in like a cafe eating like a hot sando, <laughs> and that was his one meal a day. And I was like, dude, how? Like, man, at the end of the day, like that dude must be like, I can't move. I have no energy. I want to go to sleep. None. Oh, yeah. he drinks, like, a lot of coffee as well. Huh. I, I can see I, why. Yeah, I remember seeing just, like, it would be just, like, iced coffee and then, like, hot sando from the same cafe. And he'd be like, that's it. That's my one meal a day. Man, I'm losing so much weight. And I messaged him a, a little while ago. And I was like, oh, dude, are you? did you stop doing the one meal a day? Because I was on the hot sando post. I was like, mm. what? what's hot sando? The, the fucking toasty. Fucking toasty. There we go. Sorry, guys. Saying hot sando. Like a time. grilled sandwich? Uh, like, it's, yeah, it's a hot fucking, sandwich. It's called a hot sandwich. And I, I, I forgot the English for a second. Forgive me. Well, they use it's, like it's uh, in the word. It's in the name. It's in the fucking name. Yeah. Hot sandwich. It's, like, it's like a hot sandwich. Boy, a little toasty machine. Anyway. Not quite a pocket sandwich. Not quite a po- Not as good as a pocket sandwich, but you, we'll get there. Yeah. So it's a good reference, dude. <laughs> so um, I messaged him and I was like, so like, bro, how, how's the... Uh, did you, did you stop doing the one meal a day diet? And he's like, oh, no, no, I'm still doing it. And I was like, so your one meal a day today was just a sandwich? Mm. And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, how many calories is that Like for your whole day? like It, it can't be enough. And his base is like, he had this whole explanation of why it was like the good thing to do. You know, you just can't be fucked to manage someone's life for them. <laughs> right. So I just, I just sent him Sean's email and I go, so when you're ready to like, <laughs> when, you, when you need some legit 
like nutritional help, this is the guy to to email. Like this, mm. this, this that's what I do. Okay, so the the thing about dieting, it's hard. Is no, I was actually gonna say the exact opposite. It's hard. It's really easy. It's hard. To so like I can't. losing weight and gaining weight yeah. is literally comes down to calories in and calories out. That's all it is. It's if you eat less calorie, if you eat less calories than you burn, you lose weight. If you eat more calories than you burn, you gain weight. That's science. all it is. I mean, it's science, bitch. <laughs> it's super easy to do. Yeah. Mm. And so a lot of these diets try to micromanage it to like a very big extreme. You get like intermittent fasting and there is scientific benefits to intermittent fasting. But then you get like, you always get the next step. It's like the, the meat diet. It's like the red meat diet. And there's the raw red meat diet. And they always get like one deeper. And it's like intermittent fasting, one meal a day. The no meat diet. The no meat diet. <laughs> Just don't eat. But so like, yes, there is science backing these up. Yes, you, they can be legitimate diets you, if you know what you're you doing. You breathe really heavily and that's you're like... <gasps> that's my water intake for the day. <laughs> you sponge. Yeah, the the <laughs> buy a McDonald's season. hamburger and sniff it all day. Yeah. <laughs> diet. But... High five your bro really hard diet. <laughs> take his nutrients. This is actually like a, a take I got from a YouTuber. Uh, Go ahead. By the, the channel name is Pump Chasers. Chris Jones. Nice. If you've ever heard oh, of him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's big in the industry. But like one of his takes is that training and like diet and fitness is easy. It's super easy. Mm. And like if you're a content creator, you're eventually going to run out of stuff to talk about. Because there's only so much you can say, calories in, calories out, train harder than last time. Yeah. That's like, that's there's only so many ways to say that before it gets right. stale. So you get people who like, get really deep into the science and trying to micromanage to like the, like the minute really detail. Pretty, yeah. And if you're like, if you're a, like a top level athlete, that stuff matters. But if you're an average person trying to lose weight, it means like nothing to you. And so what you have though, is you have these people who like, they try to diet based on fads they read on the internet. And there's too much information from these people who like, yeah. run out of content and try to get too deep into like talking about these fads right mm -hmm. yeah. and so they they look up like how do i lose weight how do i lose weight on google type it in google bring up the the hacker hacker man gif and like like tick, 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 tick. How, how do i lose weight and you get all these options like oh intermittent fasting paleo diet keto diet adkins diet like only, weight watchers only eat nuts but don't eat nuts only eat macadamia nuts but only the yeah. ones that are kind of circular right and like when an average person sees that they they read the information they read the the like the first paragraph of the article and there's the science and they, they talk about like, here's this works for me. This is my before out. They see the photo, the before after photo of this diet. Yeah. Right. And, but they don't delve in. Cause like, cause the, the diet is about micromanaging, like mm. super specific micromanaging. And if you don't put in the attention that you need to do that micromanaging, then you only get, and you only get like the surface level of these yeah. really complex diets. You lose a lot. So like with your friend who never did email me, <laughs> she, she's, she, uh, she's busy. Yeah. Uh, but, so, oh wait, the guy on Instagram? Oh yeah, that one. The guy, no, oh, he won't. Like, he, yeah. just, he just won't. People but, are very in their own, yeah. So what I'm sure he did is he tried to find this research on how to get down to that seven kilos. And he found, he found one meal a day diet and yeah. he read the scientific benefits of it. He read the benefits of it, but he, he didn't like, read how to do it. optimally do it. Yeah. And so he's, he's read, here are the benefits. I will, I will lose weight. I will feel healthier. I will do this if I eat one meal a day. Mm -hmm. And that's where he stopped. Mm. And so he started eating one meal a day. But what that meal is, it doesn't matter to him, which is what, which is actually the most important part. Yeah. It's because it's not what you're doing. It's what it's calories in calories out. <laughs> so it's not like he's eating one meal a day. So if I eat one meal a day, no matter what it is, I will get the same results. It's like not how it works. It's got to be like, you have to eat one meal a day, but it has to fit your, your body. And it I, has to fit your mm -hmm. nutritional needs. I feel like the yo-yo out of that's going to be really bad. Like I thought you're going to spring. Well, and it will be because like he'll be. After he hits his goal weight, he'll be eating like be like, one great, sandwich a day. Be like, and be great, starving. I don't have to eat one sandwich a day. I can eat three sandwiches a day. And then suddenly he's gone backwards yep. by two times more the speed, yeah. right? I'm gonna eat that. Oh, I've done it. I've, I'm down to 70K. Time to go to McDonald's. Time to get that fucking good old what's that, sweet chili chicken sandwich. Boy. <laughs> sweet chili chicken sandwich. I haven't been to McDonald's in a while. No, that's just a UK thing. Time to go to McDonald's and get that fucking big, three Big Macs on a guy that, That's my <laughs> yeah. three, three, three. Three Big Mac on a guy <laughs> Big Mac, three on a guy <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
the power play that involves the, yeah. that order. <laughs> the power play of going into a McDonald's, balls confident, getting to the counter, slamming your fucking McDonald's point card of time, going, Big Maku, three! On a guy's <laughs> 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 The illusion is shattered. And he's looking in the eye and being like, I just finished my diet. <laughs> yeah. It just adds the, the, the peak mwah, to, the, <laughs> to the end of that. You there, McDonald's employee. I am now 70k. Boom. Big Maku. Three. Onegai shimasu. And the woman goes, wow, it's Yongo Chozu. He said one thing in Katakana. <laughs> and Onegai shimasu. Onegai shimasu. Sir, you've successfully just used katakana and hiragana. I could tell your onegaish mask was not in kanji. That's two points. That's one Nihongo Jozo and three Big Macs. That'll Boom, be... that's N3. That's N3, N3. boy. You did You're it. You're now self-assessed N3. Here you are. Self-assessed N3. N3. Here, here you are, sir. Here is, here is the small applause you wanted. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> if, if only if the McDonald's staff would tell people to fuck off. Dude, imagine that. You go to McDonald's and no one cares. Like, McDonald's is the one place where, like, the whole weird um, so- service culture doesn't exist. <laughs> it's just America. McDon- McDonald's is just, like, a safe space. It's a no no Nihongo Joseph zone. <laughs> like, it's a safe space. You go in there, you're like, Ano, big, 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 big Mac, on a guy, she must be like, what? Nihongo Hetta? Nihongo Hetta? I just really like the concept of, like, some, like, Japanese high school girl who, like, worked at a maid cafe, like, going to sign up for McDonald's, right? Yes! So she's getting her, her part-time job at McDonald's, and she's like, Oh, gokigen yo, go shijin And they're like, no. No. You say, fuck off, here's your Big Mac. No, none of that. Listen. <laughs> what if she, work, what if she worked, like, at, like, a sundere maid cafe? Sundere maid cafe? Where they tra- treat you like shit. Yeah. McDonald's. Yeah. 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 McDonald's. Hey, what, what can I get you? What, you want uh, ice cream? Machines down. <laughs> fucking get it yourself, you fat fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fucking self service, you dumb cunt. Fuck, swung of you. It's like, what, where are the machines? I'm gonna fucking draw you a map. That's America in my mind. Like, I'm not sure. Sean, help me out. Is that America? You're not totally wrong. <laughs> I, feel like, like, I feel like Canada's the same, but it's more apologizing. Uh, no, Canada, we've replaced all the people with like a touch panel board. Yo, so, same uh, in the UK. It's yeah. sick, dude. You only go to the people to collect your order. See, McDonald's has become so dystopian. They don't even need people to be rude. They're just like, get rid of the people. Fuck them. The machine just shuts down. They're, they're so rude. They're so rude. They told their own employees to fuck off. Oh, that is as meta. I mean, you fuck, joke dude. about the machine shutting down, but I think like it was recently I was going back. I went when I back when I went back home for my friend's wedding. Yeah, uh, yeah, like yeah. I ate some trash food at the airport because I got stuck there for like 18, 18 hours, hours or some yeah. shit. <laughs> and... You know, American things. But, like, they had, like, a touchscreen machine and I ordered something. And, like, I remember, like, my order came, like, half complete. And I was like, yo, what's up with this? And they're like, oh, yeah, we just don't have those things that you clicked on the machine. And I'm like... But you paid for them? Yeah, so they gave me replacements. But I was like, why Why is this an option if you don't have it? Like, Right. Oh, America's trash. It's legit. Like, did, it's, did you see where uh, McDonald's had fucked up their, like, cheeseburger cost? Where you could... um. If you ordered like a set amount of cheeseburgers, you could remove or no, if you re- got a regular hamburger and then added cheese to it, it like subtracted enough money that eventually you could order so many you would just get free stuff. Are you fucking si- This is Yeah. Like, it was like packs. you buy a hamburger, you add cheese. Packs, oh man. So you get a cheeseburger, yeah. it costs less and then the money that you were saving from not Buying a cheeseburger. You buy another hamburger. You could buy a <laughs> hamburger and you can just keep doing it and you get free shit. Oh, I actually experienced something like that when I was in college. Yeah. And uh, so my mom's listening. Sorry for this one. But uh, <laughs> at our local grocery store uh, called Kroger's, but like they had like a self checkout machine. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we discovered at some point uh, that when we swiped a bottle of Ezra Brooks whiskey, it gave us money back. Yo. And yo, yes. Yeah. So we just like we realized we thought for a minute, and then we <laughs> bought we bought the whole store out of Ezra Brooks whiskey. I can imagine, and they paid you, and we made like fifty bucks. I can imagine that pause where all the bros looking at each other like, 
how far should we take this, guys? Like, how... Right. Because you don't, you don't want to go ham, like, right right off the get-go. You want to yeah. keep it on the down yeah, low yeah, so yeah, you, can, yeah. you can keep it rolling, right? You're like, okay, guys. We don't want to draw too much. We don't want an employee to, like, do anything but look at our ideas. Right. right. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And go away. Like, they, we don't want them to, like, inspect what's happening. Too much, yeah. All right, guys. Really slowly, let's grab every bottle in this fucking store. <laughs> let's go. We did over time. We, we we got it all. Nice. We threw a pretty pretty cool party <laughs> with the shittiest whiskey in the U.S. But that's probably what it was. We made fifty bucks doing it. But that, it was free. That it feels free. We bought we bought all the mixers for free as well. Like, there you go. There you go. You need mixer when you're drinking shitty whiskey, honestly. Yeah. It's, like you, I'm, you need mixer when you're drinking shitty anything. It's true. Shitty wine. You need to make that into like a fucking red wine spritzer, dude. Yeah. Get some, get some fucking sours in there, dude. This is now the alcoholic podcast with Jordan Green. I'll be your host. <laughs> what do you What do you mean now? <laughs> what do you mean now? <laughs> we we often drink on this cast. It's not good. It's true. Oh, dude, there's been some messy casts. We're just like putting. There, there was the one at your house. We were really fucked up, and we yeah. stopped halfway to pee. Yep. That's a good yep. Cast, dude. Which episode? is it really a podcast break if you don't have like a, a urination break halfway through? Though? Oh, dude, yeah, we've had those. Like, mm-hmm. especially the one where we were doing at my house. That was fucking fun, dude. This one we got, we got McDonald's before as well, didn't we? Yes. That was yeah. the late night one, wasn't yep. it? Oh, it was. That was so good. Oh, that was a fucking rambling cast dude yeah i think like that night i went home at like 11 30 <laughs> yes. more rambling than it always is yeah dude <laughs> shit the, the, what we used to is like because there's a hambei near my near in kichijoji near our station yeah and hambei is known so those are no hambei is a very interesting is a car in japan it's like based in like showa i want to say show yeah like, like showa era if you can find it go because a lot of japanese people don't know about this is for some reason so well, it's because it's, it's not Torikizoku. It's not fucking Torikizoku, <laughs> which is a great place, but I'll put it this way. Torikizoku will get you fucked up until you get to the train station, and mm. then you're pretty sober. Yeah. Hambei will get you fucked up until you go home. Like, you, David had an hour train ride. He yeah, got I off was, the train. I and got was, off the train at my station and had to walk from the station to my house. By the time I got to my house, I was still fucked up. Still fucked up. I I love that that's like the the, the qualifier that happens in Japan. <laughs> I don't know, like, as someone who came from, like, an American party school, it's, like, the fact that, like, I was still drunk when I got home, and yeah, that I, was an amazing night, is, like, so, like, such a such an adjustment to this country. Sean is, like, he wakes up the next day, and he's, like, I'm still drunk today. I have to sleep more. I mean, right? not every day, but it's happened. <laughs> I've done that, dude. Yeah, I've done that. I've de- yeah, I've definitely had that here yeah. once or twice. I think I woke up, I think the worst party I had in the UK was, like, woke up the next day, and I stood up, and I was, like, I'm still drunk back to sleep <laughs> Straight. Yep. I down like a ton of water right back to sleep woke up at like four fresh as a fucking daisy dude fresh as a fucking daisy it was good times I miss UK drinking See, actually I don't <laughs> Japan's better yeah for sure fish out Japan's better the drinking is easier yeah. I mean, yeah I feel like there's more stuff to do to, I mean it's probably just a side effect of being in Tokyo mm. yeah but there is more stuff to do in Japan I feel like we have like a lot more just drunken shenanigans I we do yes. than I ever did in the US yep. we do me and Sean are going to start our own company. Uh, <laughs> so, Just doing drunken shenanigans or what? It... Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, so, like a nightlife tour company. Yeah, me and Sean give the best nightlife okay. tours. Um, we've, had, we've had multiple people say we should start a business. Multiple people are like, but you guys are going to start a business together doing Some of them were parents. Some of them were parents. Not our parents. No, no, no my mother would not. Mother, please stop listening to my podcast. Because this podcast on the Geisha Mask. Please stop. I've, I've said this ages ago. My mother... Don't listen to this podcast. I'm hoping she doesn't, but she probably does. It's okay. She's very supportive. <laughs> oh man! Speaking of that, my mom was like, "Oh, I heard you run a podcast." I'm like, "No, you didn't." <laughs> <laughs> oh, son, I heard you run a podcast. You hear shit? <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm like, nope. She's like, "Oh, what's the name?" I'm like, "Not telling you." <laughs> Dude, I love that exchange. Son, I heard you on a podcast. Fucking <laughs> 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 who, who the fuck you been Mm-mm. talking to, mom? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. I don't know. At this point in my life, I think my mom knows most of my dirty laundry. Yeah, <laughs> it's just—it's just a like she can come listen to this. I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. My my mother, I think oh, my father probably listens to this. To be fair, he he he's very much an internet stalking. What I do. Uh, okay. So he probably listens to my podcast. That's pretty interesting. That's true. Hey, Dad, send money. Thanks. That's it. <laughs> send money. <laughs> send, send money, bro. Thanks, dude. See you on Christmas time. That's it. That's pretty much it's rough out here. It's rough out here for a, mm. for a young man trying to survive during these corona times. True. It's yeah. true. True. But yeah, as we were saying before, we went off on this drinking nonsense side tangent. 
we we're talking about you going from English teaching to... Oh, yeah, that was a long side tangent. Shit. We were. Well, it was other conversations I got involved. So, you know, long and short of it. I mean, that's really, that's, that's the essence of a podcast. If you think it is, it. yeah. But yeah, so how I, how I ended up in personal training in Japan. Basically, a lot of luck, a lot of hard work. Yeah. So I was saying that, like, step one is getting the certification. The certification. And step two is working at, like, a, a bigger sort of, like, gym. big box gym, is yeah. what we refer to them. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. see, the thing about Japan is, like, as a foreigner, you don't really have that option. No, they don't care they don't. You. They don't do visa sponsorships. Nope. They don't do non-native speakers. Yeah for their employees like i'm you might get a rare case sometimes but i personally have never seen a foreign employee at a gym no no like ever it's just something you don't see you you barely see foreign employees at almost any store like you barely see foreigners at gyms like honestly like (laughs) there's there's barely any foreigners in my gym like there was one near my near my house and oh this is fucking a good story oh my god i mean fucking this is a good story so this gym in my house it's uh not any time fitness it was Fast gym twenty four. That one, yeah. Yeah. Mm. So it was down over from my station, and during one of these uh, English teaching meetings, I was like, "I'm gonna join this gym, Fast Gym twenty four, because I want to, you know, get in shape, kind of thing." Yeah. And then um, one of my friends goes, "Oh no, no, man, you can't join that gym." My friend tried to join that gym, and they said to him, "He can't join the gym because he's a foreigner." They were like, "You're not allowed to join the gym because you're a foreigner and you can't read the." Immediately, I have one question. Go on. Does this guy speak Japanese? Here we go. That's that's always the question. Here we fucking go. I'm gonna there's go with the, there's, the, there's no. the I speak Japanese exception to any yep. foreigner rule. Yep. So when I went to the gym, because I was like, "Are you fucking? This gym is so racist. They ain't gonna let fucking foreigners sign up to it." And I was like, "I gotta see this." Yo, literally, I was like, "I gotta be." I'm more. about to have a confrontation. I'm about to fight some bitches. I went to the gym and I was like, "No, no, no! I'm here to fucking inspect your fucking gym." So I walked on my I, it's racism police here. Literally, I'm just like. I, I'm, I'm, I'm on, already, like already writing the blog post. I'm on, I'm on speed dial to the council of racism. I'm ready. I'm gonna go fucking check your shit. I mean, I, I'm here to check your privilege, sir. Is, <laughs> so I, I went inside and I was like looking at their weights. I was looking at their shit and I was like, all right, this has what I need. I was like, all right, can I sign up? The woman was like, can you can you read these safety instructions? I'm like, yeah. She's like, can you can you? Yeah, hi, all right, here's here's the form. Fill it in. So I'm, right. I'm waiting for the racism. I'm like, all right. It's gonna be like a it's gonna be like a sneak race, you know what I mean? I'm gonna fill it in, I'm gonna hunk it, then she's gonna punch me in the face and call me the N-word. I, I've seen this, <laughs> I've seen this movie. So I was like, I'm like, I'm ready for that cross count when the N-word punch comes. So I hunk her, I give it to her, and she's like, here's your card. And I'm like, oh, you just thank thanks for the cup. Is that it? She's like, Yeah, you can start like in two weeks. And I'm like, what? racism i wanted to punch someone back i feel like people often just mistake being incompetent with being discriminated discriminated. (laughs) yeah yeah yep yep that is a lot of living in japan it's like well when you live in a country that doesn't really speak any language but japanese and you don't speak japanese like you really shouldn't be complaining about any sort of like discriminatory thing that happens to you in that regard i mean obviously there's different kinds like different degrees but if someone's like you can't work here because you can't read kanji and you need to read kanji to work here it's like that's not discrimination that's just like you need to learn how to read kanji yeah Yeah. pretty much i I remember the end of the story was something like the the gym said to the guy you can come here with your japanese girlfriend (laughs) to work out together but i have a feeling that what the woman was saying was, bring your Japanese girlfriend here, and then she can help you help you fill out the form, and then you can work out. And then you can work out, you dumbass. Because like when I was like telling the story back to the guy, I was like, so you're telling me the guy, the, the gym person said this, and he's like, yeah. And I was like, you don't speak Japanese. How the fuck did you know that's what they said? Right, exactly. And it was like, right. oh no, there's a hole in my story. It's like, yeah, because th- the fuck, the fuck is this nonsense kind of thing? Yep. But yeah, that that's a, a normal <laughs> topic on a podcast. Is always like speak Japanese. It's a very common thing to encounter here. Sean, how much did speaking Japanese help you become a personal trainer in Japan? Oh, uh, it was like, it's 100% necessary. There we go. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> Problem solved. Problem solved. It's like, you, honestly, there are so many problems I've had in Japan that just speaking basic Japanese has really fucking got right. me out of. Like, it's right. so easy. Oh, this happened yesterday. And I didn't get to tell you. You're gonna love this. Oh, you're gonna fucking okay. love this story. I, I gotta readjust. I'm excited. I'm gonna. I'm gonna readjust as well. I'm gonna like so get deep in this. My whole thing is that when I move into a new area, the first fucking thing I do is I make friends with the police. I do it for various reasons, but one of the reasons is that in case there's crime or in case something happens, I don't want any issues with the police. 
So my old area, it was like, I would skateboard everywhere. Mm. But I was bros with the police. So they would be like, yo, Jordan, you know, be safe. And I'm like, thanks, bro, be safe. I wasn't ta- 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 something. No, it wasn't even Tom. I'm thinking of Tanaka and it wasn't his name. It's never Tanaka. <laughs> it's, it's never, actually, never Tanaka. actually Tanaka. That, that's the issue. I always forget it's that. always Tanaka, but, but it's, it's never, never Tanaka. Tanaka. Exactly. <laughs> Every time. So um, in my new station, I became friends with one of the police guys that works there. And his name is ta- it's Takahashi. It's, mm. it's close. It's, it's, it's close. one tick away from it's Tanaka. One, it was close. I remember like when I was in the wine bar in my house because it's a fucking beautiful bar. And I'm hanging out and the guy, the police guy comes in. He's like playing clothes and he's like, oh, oh, gosh, that looks it. He's talking to the bar guy. The bar guy's like, nah, this is Jordan. He's cool. Like he's like, he's working, like writing shit. And the guy goes, also he speaks Japanese. And the, the guy's like, oh, nice to meet you. And I'm like, oh, what's your name? And he goes, ah, oh. and I'm like, oh. he's like, Takashi, like, fuck, fuck. So good. Anyway, that's not the story. So <laughs> I've not seen this guy in ages because I've not been to the bar because of Corona. I've been going like to and from work. It's been busy. Not seen this guy in fucking ages. Anyway, leave my station. There's like, there's a commotion. Tap my little thing, the, tap my little thing with a little card on the thing. Leave the station, little commotion going on. I'm like, oh, it's a commotion. The commotion is so big that it's like an old man and two police guys. The mm-hmm. old man is going. So the police are saying to the old man, something lines of, hey, uh, you're pretty suspicious, my man. I th- there's been some um, some stories going around. There's been some uh, some reports of a guy matching your description. Pretty suspicious, man. I'm assuming this guy is touching people on the train. He's like an old man wearing a suit. The right. standard crime. Standard crime. This man was definitely has touched enough people that the police have gone, oh, I guess we have to work. Fuck. And they've yep. gone to work. You know, they got this guy like, come to the call band, you're looking suspicious. I got a headphone now because yeah, I love eavesdropping. You know what I'm saying? That's what's going on. I'm walking past and the guy screams in this station. He goes... I'm not suspicious. What about that foreigner over there of the afro? Isn't he more suspicious than me? How am I getting... He's making a massive scene. The police turn around. Who the fuck is it? Takahashi. I almost fucking exploded of excitement. I was like, I've never been this hard in my entire life. The situation is perfect. He turns to me. And I'm like, oh. And he goes, oh. And Takashi goes, what? Hold on. Sashi, I'm like, yo. So I be like, oh, she, he's like, yo. He's like, oh, Jordan, long time no see. And I'm like, yo, long time no see. And he goes, oh, I'll catch me in the wine bar next week. And I was like, yeah, yeah, probably like Thursday or something. He's like, all right, cool. He's like, oh, go on. He's like, oh, I gotta get back to work. And I'm like, all right, have a good man. Turns back to this guy. And this guy's face is just like, shock. The man is in shock. Because out of all the people he could have pointed at, he pointed at the one motherfucker who knew that police guy. And that man must have <laughs> yeah. thought himself, ooh. What bad luck. Because this man got carted off. And I was standing there like, mm. I was savoring every moment. I was there just like, mm. take his ass to prison. Because <laughs> <laughs> Japan prison is bad. Take that man's ass to prison. It was good. Uh, I, I want this entire story mm. written on my gravestone. <laughs> <laughs> the entire baby. story just like you've told it now. Just like I've told it now. Including this bit. <laughs> It is my fear. I've told this story. It happened yesterday. I've mm. told this story like five times already. It is so good. <laughs> I wanted to tell you yesterday, like, but I was like, like no. even even then, right? Like this guy, the fact that he picked the one dude who knows the cop that's like fucking yeah, he with him. But like the fact that he had the the audacity to just point out the only foreigner, only foreigner. within within his cone of vision, yes, yeah. is. Absolutely ridiculous. ridiculous. Well, and the, the thing is, it probably would have worked at any other place in Tokyo. Maybe. But Maybe. Not here. Yeah. The thing is, I feel like if he pointed to any other person in the station, if he was like, what about that Japanese man with the colored hair? Perhaps that gentleman over there with the shoes that are a bit too shiny. Yeah. What about that man, his briefcase, a little bit too big. Maybe there's cocaine inside. Like, if he had honestly pointed to any other person in that station, he might have gotten away with it. The police might have gone, oh, this man, you know, we, we get your point, sir. There are other suspicious people. Yeah. <laughs> M- move along. Go on. It's quick. You're pointing to the one foreigner. The one foreigner happened to the police guy. I thought that would be the safest option. No. And now he's racist. Now he's racist and also... The racist him. police got him. <laughs> yeah. Get him. The racist police. Take his ass to prison. Fucking... Racist prison. Racist prison. Oh, racist prison is bad, dude. It's it's bad. You're gonna say the N-word for the doors to open, but when you say the N-word, you get five years added to your sentence. It's not good. Oh, it's a trap. It's a trap. It's a trap. It's a, tra- <laughs> it's a fucking trap. 
all the black guys in prison just using the N word past the gal. <laughs> the <door was> open. <laughs> hey, 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 Jamal, can you open my <laughs> cell? <laughs> Voice <laughs> That's a high tech prison. It's, but it's all sliding doors. We live in the country of robots, sir. Everything is high tech here. It's like except for their all the all, all the fucking guards are just like robotic velociraptors. Yes. Like the fucking hotel lasers mounted. It's got that little the little fucking robot with the the screen in his chest, and he's like wearing his fucking cop hat. He can play soccer sometimes yeah. too. <laughs> oh, and they have they have. The most technologically advanced fax, mach- fax machines you've ever seen. They're yeah. really good. They can also copy. It's yeah. fucking sick, dude. Made in the year 2020. Dude, it fuck me, dude. Made it fucking 2020. <sighs> fax machine. I had to fax something. Man, like, fax machines should be fucking outlawed. Do you, do you still fax things? Yeah, dude. Absolutely. It's fucking Japan. It's so good. We gotta, we gotta, Even if it's not part of your work, you still have to do it for like immigration and yeah, stuff. Yeah. It, was, it was funny. I was talking to my mom today, and she's like, oh, we want to send you money for your your birthday can we just wire it to you and she's like do you do online banking and i just went ha! <laughs> <laughs> bitch fax me the money <laughs> yeah i'll cut like, it out and use it. <laughs> i'm like online banking in japan online fucking what a well, joke except, except when they do do it because like i used to transfer money home through like a, a form at like the jp post yeah and they switched to online and they're like oh by the way all these forms you had made don't work anymore now you yeah. gotta sign up for our broken online system it took me stupid. two months to figure out it doesn't work i had to go Fucking there five dumb. times i went there i, I went there once and i gave up i i because like, i went to the woman and i go oh i've heard there's like online banking now she goes yeah there is and i go can i set it up she goes i don't know how and i go well the thing is though it's not just there's online banking now it's there's online banking now you can't use anything else yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that's it. The minute you everything set it up, else is outlawed. And no, then if it's you, not, it's not even. It's like you have to set this up. For me, it was like you can't use your paper thing anymore. You oh, have to that, go online. Yeah, go to go online. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's not even that too. It's like, and then if you want to do anything online, we're gonna charge you five hundred yen for every transaction yeah. you yeah. do. Yeah. And then if you want to switch back, it's eight hundred and fifty yen. I wanted to put. <laughs> Um, I had like a jar of change. I was mm. gonna put it into my bank. It's how fucking backwards Japan's banking is. They have a change. They've changed machines like like embedded into the machines. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you so just like, dumble the yeah, change. Yeah, dump my fucking shit in there. So I go with this change. And I'm like, I'm gonna dump my shit into this fucking machine. And all the machines were like, sometimes like, there's a weird setting where they're like, we're not allowing any more change in this machine. Like no right. change in this machine. But there's still the fucking slot for the change. So I go to the the, the what's it called, the the desk. And I'm like, hey dude, can I can I throw my change in this machine? And the guy's like. Oh, no, no, you can't throw your change in the machine. I'm like, so how do I get my change into my bank? And he's like, oh, oh, oh you have to, uh, uh, oh, you, you can use the machines. And I'm like, sir. <laughs> what? Excuse me? <laughs> sir, you just told me I can't. I was like, come with me. Let's go on an adventure. So I made the guy follow me to the machines. I put my card and like, use the thing. And like, I was like, look, the change option is it's gone. There. It's gone. It's, what do it's I disappeared. do? And he's like, he didn't know what was going on. He's like, I'm so confused. What's going on? Why is the change option not there? Hello. I, I came up the next day. Still not there. I mm-hmm. like when they make you do things that they don't understand themselves. Yeah. It's the best. It literally took me five visits with five different employees to get someone who knew how to, like, yeah. fix my online banking. No one else knew how it worked. Mm. This is why the bank in my old house, I really liked it. Because there was, like, a really tiny little branch of the of JP. And there was, like, one, two, three, five, seven people working there. Seven people. That's it. And I used to go there and they'd do everything for me. Yeah. yeah, they were great. I'd be like, oh, I want to do, I want to like do this, and then go. I will do it for you, Jordan Sensei. No worries, because like the, one of the tellers was a mother of someone that I taught. So we're like, yeah, Jordan Sensei, yeah, I'll do it. And it's like, it's all done for you, and I'll bring them like omiyage and shit. Dude, the bank was fucking sick. It was my favorite place, and I've moved, go to my new bank. Mm. Trash, trash. Way bigger. No one knows what the fuck they're doing. No one knows what the fuck they're doing. It's the worst. Banking in Japan sucks, guys. Yep. <laughs> that's like that's like working in Japan in a nutshell, though. Yeah, pretty much. It's like it sucks. You've no, you just finish, you've, you've done that too. But like, it's you have a lot of people who just like don't know what they're doing. Don't know what they're know doing. What they're doing. <laughs> and they collect a paycheck at the end of the week, and then you wonder why Tanaka's there every day. Yeah, just like hanging yeah. out. Like, but they can't fire him. It. Yeah. No, you can't fire Tanaka. The contract's no. too fucking solid. But you can quit. And yeah, you can't. You can't get rid of them, you, nope. and you have to give them a promotion every like five years, or else or raise or yeah, bonus raise or, or bonus. Man, I want a bonus. I need a bonus in fucking forever. And by forever, I literally mean never. Never. I want a fucking <laughs> yep. bonus it sucks, dude. 
I once had a chance for one, but gave it up when I quit my job. <laughs> I did as well, and I gave it up when I quit my job. It was worth it in the end, obviously. Like, it was, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely worth it. Like, honestly, I think uh, the bonus program is good, but I'd rather just have that in my pay. Yeah. Like, all the time. Right. Like, yeah. I think my old company was like, we take out, like, a certain amount of money from your pay every month and then that gets added up and then added to something else in a really convoluted system and that becomes your bonus and i was like what can i just, can you just not take money out my out my paycheck please can mm-hmm. i have all the paycheck and there's like no 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 can you I can have, have most some mostly some of it. mostly some of the most of the paycheck and the rest of it what can i have it's like pension yeah it's oh, like yeah. can you give us all this money for pension and it's like no i don't want like what does it do it's like you get you get it back when you retire it's like what if i'm not going to retire in japan it's like well can you give us the money anyways <laughs> <laughs> no. and, then, and then after three years we'll give you 80 percent of it back and it's like why what? am i paying you? like what, what am i paying you for it's like could i just have all of it all of it back? And no, like, it's like, no. you can, but you have to get like a... A special form and you gotta... No, it has to be filled out by like a Japanese native... Man, I've said this before. To send back to you in your home country. Cunts. i said this before, and it's fucking true. Japan, at every turn, mm. will nickel and dime you to fucking death. Yeah. If it's not the train, it's fucking pension. Yep. If it's not pension, you're okay. not getting a bonus. Yep. It's healthcare. It's fucking everything. Japan out here, like, listen, we're gonna give you... 300 three grand is going to be your your pay and you're like yo three grand fuck yeah and they go i'm just gonna take that 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 80 that's the rent just give me these i'm just gonna take that that 20 that, that's the bills don't worry about, about the bills i'm just gonna take that uh you know that that that, that 50 again that's just gonna that's just for me yeah that's just for me they just fucking nick yeah oh key fees as well trains, <laughs> key fees oh i'm just you, 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 you gotta give that. the landlord some money so that they can give you the apartment like a deposit no yeah. you have to pay a deposit too there's just an extra fee too. Just, I <laughs> wrote an article about I interviewed a guy who's a, a state agent I wrote an article about areas of when you move house that you can fucking nickel and dime out of you can sort of yeah. uh, you can sort of negotiate out of cleaning fees cleaning fees you can negotiate out of uh, key money key money you can get out of key money oh what's the other one uh, raking, raking, raking. Uh, it's like your deposit. Your de- no, raking is like thank you money. The the oh, oh sorry, that's key money. So that I'm is thinking, key money. I'm thinking of key, key money. Sh- yeah. Raking is. I'm thinking key of money. key changing money. So there's like oh actually, yes the yeah. yeah oh my god. So the key fee is raking. Uh, I don't know key, why key so, exchanging. Yeah. yeah. So raking translates to like thank you money. So there's like raking, which they've translated to key money. Then there's a key changing fee. Fee. Yeah. So when I went to the. Uh, my like my thing for the first time they were like we need key money and a key changing fee fee i was like you f- what, what 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 am i paying for what the fuck you can't just make up these fucking things yeah, and it's fucking to pay stupid them, cunts hey, it's it's so, it's so crazy to like expect people to pay like a full month's rent as thank you for letting me live in your apartment building money right Yo. it's like i'm already paying you every month yeah well, that is you your want, thank you that's your thank you honestly it's like I, this is a profitable business for you why do i have to thank you with money i'm yeah. not shitting on the walls and smearing it into the foundation of the building what more do you want from me like that's that, that's as much thanks i can fucking give you honestly yeah i, I can't okay. promise that if i'm paying a thank you money to Yo, when i'm paying thank you money that's all the thanks you get and i'm gonna take a shit <laughs> you don't get thanks in any other form from me if i'm paying money for it i'm gonna take shits in all the locks of all the doors before I leave the house. Well, my house is that is that is an advanced undertaking. <laughs> That's an av- you you're gonna be fucking accurate with that thing. To s- s- yeah, you, just, you just freeze it. <laughs> you little penalty. Jam, Jam it in, it in there, and then it. it. Oh God, David's fought this one. Through. Yeah, but then you have to pay extra for cleaning at the end. Nah, I don't notice until you. That's why you do it right before you leave. Right before Smart. you leave. Smart. Yeah. It's nice and cold. It stays cold for a little while because it's in the metal. Metal piece, you know. You remove a like floorboard, hide some shrimp piece. under there. <laughs> <laughs> remove like a wall, yeah. put a, a lobster tank, like a live lobster tank in the, oh, in the, man. In the fucking walls of the place. Seal that shit up, dude. Come on. Do this some... is the time bomb of stench. Oh, dude, yep. hell yeah. You gotta get the work in. Get a bin, just like hide it somewhere in the house. Some flies will find it. It'll come in mm-hmm. swiftly. Man, I hate that. God. Oh, my neighbor this morning at like... Three, no, the sun was out. Four o'clock in the morning was out outside, like screaming, doing weird stuff again. Again, doing yeah. weird stuff. Nice. Oh, he does. He, he was like walking up and down. Oh, what was he saying? No, was he screaming this time? I forgot. I was, I was half asleep. So he wasn't I did screaming it, about Corona this time. No, it was something weird. He kept saying, "I forgot." It's completely. Not, I was really sleepy. The so, man's a nutter. The man's a nut. What I did this time was because uh, it was right outside my house this time, yeah. which is great. So I opened my uh, my window, like really quietly, and I just sort of leaned outside. I just watched him like 
like sort of do the big like long leg exercises like being all crazy yeah and i watched it for a good five minutes it was really entertaining for my i was really tired but it was entertaining i watched him for a bit really silently just like this just like watching him be a complete nutter outside and then you must have noticed someone's looking and he looks up looks directly at me just like <laughs> thing yeah just staring at him he goes I know. I'm just. I've yet to say anything. I'm not. Said, I'm not said a word. I'm just looking at him. And he's like, ah. Well, I... See what's like. <laughs> just, just, just apologizes, bows a little bit, and I'm like, I slowly close the window, lock it up again, go straight back to sleep, <laughs> and quiet as well. Like, I'm telling you, my neighbor is a nut house. He's gonna. He's gonna kill someone. I don't know who. I think the cult got to him. Maybe <laughs> there, was a, there was a cult came to my came to my door. Nice, they, they wanted, do that. They yeah. wanted me to join their cult. They were like, "Can you come to Tatsukawa and can you uh, j- come into the temple today, right now?" And I was like, mm, "No, no, nope. I have a, an adult. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, yeah, I, I'm a grown man. Like the fuck, <laughs> I can't just like I can't just go join your cult." I was like wearing pajamas, and I was like, "I'm kind of gonna go to the gym in a bit, so I don't really want to go to this cult right now." And she was like, "Can I come back next week?" And I was like, "I won't be here, but..." I don't care. If you want to waste your time, go for it. I guess you went to my neighbor's house. The neighbor was like, yeah. Cult sounds, sounds good. good. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Got nothing else going on. Is yeah. Free milk ventry? Yeah, I'll do it. He's a baby. That's a fucking child. That's yep. why I, can't, I hate him so much. Oh, I told you mm. I, I, on the on message. So my neighbor is very loud. Oh, yeah. yeah with the, Let me the t- other guy. Yeah. People are enjoying my neighbor update, so this will be the last update today. So my neighbor is very loud. He's always making too much fucking noise. At all times, this morning included. He's always being like a complete cunt. He's clearly, he's clearly living alone for the first time ever in his entire life. Nice. So, leaving my house a few days ago, you know, there was some commotion outside my door. My door. In, in the hallway. And I was like, well, like, it's time to go to work. Time to leave my house. So I left my house and I was like, what? So you know, like, pretty loud. I was like, it's pretty fucking loud outside. Close my door. Not noticing that there's a man standing outside my neighbor's door. The doors are open. He's standing in the doorway. My man is bald headed. He's, there's nothing up there. He's like the polar opposite of me. It was scary. And he was having quiet, angry words of my neighbor. And I wanted to stand there and listen, but I had to go to work. And I didn't want his wrath to be directed towards me. So I got the fuck out of there. So I have no idea what my neighbor's done, but he's making enemies. And he needs to fucking stop. <laughs> he needs to fucking calm the fuck down. Man, it's it's only a matter of time before mm. someone just absolutely has enough of his fucking shit oh, and yeah. just bops him. It's completely, like it's gonna like happen. they'll they'll like they'll like wait behind like your fucking rubbish bin. Yeah. At like four a.m. and he comes out there doing his fucking kick exercises. Yeah. And they just katana right between the eyes. <laughs> Done. Dead. Kill him. I'll, I'll probably see it happen. I'll be like, listen, TR, Tottenham rules apply. I, yeah. I see anything. <laughs> I see anything. Ignorance is bliss, right? Yeah, but like, did you? You're like, oh, Takashi no. shows up and you're like, nothing. I don't know. Takashi's like, Jordan, do you see anything? I was like, oh, I don't speak Japanese, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> I see. The ultimate defense. The ultimate defense. Yeah. Jordan, no gun. No name. Meet the mascot. Like, what? Now I'm out to speak Japanese. Yeah. Talking about, come on, man, get get out of here, get out of here, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 man. Tabe 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 what a power play, dude. <laughs> Prove to me that I'm not fucking speaking German. Get out of here. Fucking Takahashi walks away with like, wow, German really sounds similar to Japanese. <laughs> it's weird. It's crazy. It's because we're both island nations. <laughs> <laughs> Germany, the famous island nation. <laughs> famous for being islanded. Dude, that's good. Oh, hold on. Bro, that's fucking funny. Bro, I got any mail this week? Uh, We did get some mail, yes. Oh, let's do... Oh. Mail time. Do the spiel, David. I will do the spiel. Oh, that was exciting. So if you have <laughs> mail, <laughs> if you have mail, send it into uh, Tokyo Fresh Podcast on Instagram, Tokyo Fresh Podcast at gmail.com. Uh, I've started using the Twitter a lot more at yeah. Tokyo Fresh Pod. Send it all in there. I'll see it somewhere. 
or Jordan will see it, or I'll send it to Jordan at Afro in Japan. I won't too. see it. Sean won't see it. Well, I could show you if you really want. I could see it. It's we'll potential that I could see it. We'll forward it to Sean as well. Sean will see yeah. it. <laughs> there's, there's like two question things mixed in there. Yeah. If, if you want to, yeah. All right, go for it, dude. What are your... What well, I, you get? I don't have a phone to look oh, at said yeah, sure, questions. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, so normally it's normally he has it. So my phone's in my hand right now. I was looking at my old Instagram. Oh, we got a, we got a bunch. Yeah. Uh, bum, bada, bum, bum, bada, bum, bum, bada, bum, bum, bada, bum. Oh, what the fuck is this? I hate when people reply with emojis. Yeah. It is the most. It is. It is after the emojis. Yeah, the ones that reply with emojis are always like bots. Yeah, bots, idiots. Yeah. Uh, Dickheads. Sean, Sean, we got a question for you. Yeah, Dickheads. Oh, Sean, for me? Yeah, yes. We got one from wow. uh, B Boy underscore Dixon. He says, "Uh, what's your main goal doing fitness here in Japan?" My main goal, like career wise, I imagine. Uh, so I eventually would like to probably start my own training business mm. or maybe in like conglomeration with what I'm doing right now, but I want to open a gym where I can train foreigners in English or Japanese people in Japanese mm. or Japanese people in English or foreigners in Japanese. Japanese. Like, not like English lessons, but like a place where you can practice your English in an authentic environment while also getting physically fit. So like, good. a big part of my philosophy, as we've mentioned before, is like sustainable change in health. And so like, I'm that kind of trainer as opposed to like a get huge muscle yeah. trainer. I'm more right. health for everyone. So I'm just like, the broad scheme of things is I'm trying to make training more accessible for average people and trying to make the world a healthier place i suppose kind of like how, what training did for me yeah, 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 in yeah, the yeah. past because i used to be massively overweight <laughs> and i have photos of those the, yeah jordan first met me back then <laughs> yeah dude that's sick but so that's a big thing for me and so i'm trying to like sort of expand on that as well with like my writing and like a big part of my writing style is accessibility. So if you read my articles, it should be pretty easy to understand for people who don't know the They're science cool. behind it. They're pretty good. And so I want to kind of combine those two facets of my career into something where I can just make fitness more accessible mm. and probably through my own place. Also online training is a potential thing as well. And my focus is always on people with uh, more sedentary lifestyles that are seeing sort of adverse effects of that. And that's what my current gym specializes in. That's cool. Okay. Hmm. Is especially in older people right now, uh, I'd be focusing more on younger people. Like, sort of just because that's my own interest. Because I used to be, like, a big gamer. Like, like yeah. still I'm a gamer, but I was, like, overweight, very sedentary during college days. And I've, it really affected my life in, like, a negative way. And I kind of want to help oh, reverse people. that and people yeah. in similar situations. Of course, not to exclude the elderly as well. Yeah. I, but that's sort of my well. focus is the uh that's pretty good re reversing the ill effects of an overly sedentary lifestyle <laughs> and just whatever i can make happen that creates hmm. that it's kind of hard to tell exactly like have like a big goal like i want to own a gym by this date because it's japan and it's kind of like difficult to who yeah who yeah. knows what you're doing it's like a it's like a lucky grab kind of thing yeah, like he's just like Ugh, really who knows what i'll be in a year who knows what i'll be in two years but yeah. i'm progressing for that i should just phase more and more into things. I always have that final goal that I know that I need to go to and then the path is always there. Like the final goal is for me it's like a cafe on my own cafe and then you sort of right. walk towards that goal and yeah. sometimes you go a little bit off path but as long as you're sort of heading in that direction you, you kind of mean like that, right? You, yeah. So, yeah. So I do want I eventually want a business where I have yeah, your own. Um, like a gym where I can train people and also can do online training. Like mm -hmm. just something that facilitates that. So whatever shape that takes depends on I got, the next couple of years. We got one more question for you actually. Ooh. Um, so this one, even I could take this one. It's a pretty strange question. So the question was basically uh, some thoughts by Jemu and he says, how can I get uh, big old buns? I mean guns like yours. How can I get big old guns like yours? And for this, I'd probably say the best way to get big old guns is actually to probably email Sean and get a personal training thing from him. Yeah, I'll do, I'll do assessments and any sort of... Yeah. Just like, I'll do like a trial period for no charge, essentially. Just see if it's the right fit for you kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, to go into a little bit more detail about that. Uh... You can spot train your arms huge, but like I think you'll find a better aesthetic look for your guns and your buns if you do a more sort of full body, lower your fat, increase your muscle across the whole body. It's much more aesthetic in general. Yeah. You don't, you don't, you don't want to be a triangle, right? Yeah. You don't want to be a triangle, bro, honestly. You'd never skip leg day. Yeah. Like if you want if you day. want big guns, you should probably have big legs to match them. Kind of thing. Yeah. And it's also 
a lot mm. healthier overall to have mm. like a more well-rounded physique. I feel like for a man who's gone from like throwing weights around in the gym to like following Sean's um the personal training routine he's given me. Mm. Like throwing weights around the gym is good when you start. Like it's yep. good just to get the feet of the weights, you know, you can sort of as yeah. long as you're not going too heavy, but the having someone actually knows what they're doing, telling you like, I right, do this, do this, like follow this right. this pattern, follow this pattern. Night and fucking day. Night and fucking day, honestly. Like, well, there's this concept as well where yeah. uh, it's, they're called newbie gains, which is like when newbie you first start, yeah. start training, your body's like not used to it, and you will like you will Straight gain away. so much muscle so much more quickly, yeah, than any other time in your life. And, and once that's gone, it's gone. That's mm. it. And so, like, I per- like I really wish that I had started with like a trainer, yeah, and like I start or I started knowing what I was doing because I feel like I definitely wasted a lot of my own newbie gains, yeah, yeah. like just like sort of throwing weights around and like because. Of the newbie games, just throwing weights around will work well for you. Yeah. Because it's true. more than you were doing before, and you do have those like in, that increased muscle gain. Muscle gain, right. yeah. It's pretty good. If, if but stop, if I was optimizing it from the start... Way better, yeah. Yeah. Definitely get a trainer, guys. And give 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 Sean a little melt. Also, Sean's Instagram is uh, somewhat big in Japan. Such, <laughs> such a good Instagram handle. So, yeah. I am somewhat big in Japan. Not the biggest, but I'm kind of big. He's somewhat big. Do you pretty wanna... big by Japanese standards. Nice. If you want to get a, like a personal training session from him, like hit him up. Get a get a yeah. Get a get a quote. Kind of Even thing. if you just want to like talk about Chat fitness shit, or yeah. something, like I will, I'll hear you out for sure. There's like uh, I don't require he big does commitments like that. He does know. like talking about fitness. We do it <laughs> quite often. Oh, the other question we asked this week was uh, from David. David's question this week was: Listen up, you degenerates! I need to know who the fuck is your wife or husband, Dome. It's for scientific research. We it got, is for scientific research. We got some answers. We got we, we got some answers. We'll keep the answers. The Did reason you keep them safe. The reason okay. why I want to keep them. This is more like a um. You got some good questions. Uh, more like I wanted to know like if there was like a general consensus. Yeah. Mostly because uh, I think we mentioned last week that you had that. Um, sexy wife figure. Yes. Oh yeah. So be one for your brother. Yeah, we're one for the yes. little brother. We so can, can finish fucking my space. thinking was okay. We have we have one. Yeah. Let's let's blow this out a little bit bigger, right? Yeah, make like it make it a legitimate contest. So yeah. I wanted to know, like, is there um, like a character or something that we could purchase that would make more of an incentive? Like it's not just like some random. Fucking sort of online la- lady, character. right? Yeah. 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 Well, we we don't really watch Sao, so we don't really know. But I no, I have no idea. I've been getting messages people like, I want that fucking anime figure, and I'm like, <laughs> please don't wank over the anime. Yeah. Once, once you get it, do whatever you want. So like, he, don't send pictures. So it's in pictures. Here's here's my Old video. Here's my idea, right? Like, if I if I got some kind of consensus as to uh, you know, give me a guiding light as to where to go, I yeah. could get a first, second, and third type. Of big uh, to the anime character, k- kind of sure. Yes, whatever you want to call it. I mean, what else are they? Yeah, yeah. sure. It's and, now, then, it's and then do it that crime, way, basically. Yeah, <laughs> it's big to the anime character. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Those are the two options in yeah. Japanese media. <laughs> so, <laughs> if yeah. you have characters, I guess send them into the podcast. I want to know. Yeah. And don't like, don't just give me bullshit answers. Like th- this is legitimately for a like contest. Yeah. yeah. Like don't give me fucking like give your us- haha. I'm, I'm so clever. Like stupid yeah. fucking answers. Give us, give us some good answers. Tell us generally what anime character yeah. you'd want. And we're, yes. gonna, we're generally going to buy some figures. We're going to run some contests. We're going to give yeah. them away. So yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Sick. Cool. I think that's a cast. So we have to say, fucking well done, guys. Oh. Well, no one no one got too far. Guys, we I mean, only alienated, like, Australia and Italy. And, and they don't matter. We're just reminding them, just, just in case you forgot. In, in, in case they jump back in <laughs> right. at the end of the car. Like, yeah. Anyway, to, to, to recap, we don't need your views. That's <laughs> so bad. <laughs> <laughs> guys, it's been it's been great. Thank you so much. Sean, thanks for coming on. Yeah, to the yeah it was really fun. I'm glad, I'm glad. I'm always I'm always down to talk about fitness way too much. Oh, 100 <laughs> percent Guys you can catch Sean at somewhat big in Japan. As always, I'm Afro in Japan. You can nice, I like the hell that it fucking rings up together. It's Segways into each other. It's pretty good, it's pretty good. Until then guys, I'll see you next time. See you next week. Bye. See you next week. Bye. Love you. Bye. <laughs>